After two busy months and two busy rounds of Ivor GT Sprint Series powered by Huizhenfeld Competition, its top drivers make its way to the high banks of Daytona International Speedway, the World Center of Racing, to try and see if they can close the calendar year off right. Welcome to Racebot TV's coverage of today's round of the Ivor GT Sprint Series powered by Huizhenfeld. I'm Justin Prince, alongside of the move for today's action is Stefan Schlacker, along with our producer, Hugo Louise. Today, we get ready to race at a high-speed circuit. Draft expected to be huge, Stefan, for this round as drivers get ready to see how they fare out here at the high banks in Florida. Yeah, should be a very good one, Justin, with those long, long straights that the Daytona International Speedway is offering us today. We most definitely won't know who's gonna be the winner until they have crossed the start-finish line. And let's be honest about it, that's what makes this track such a great rovo. You never know what you get. It's a bag full of race cars that we're gonna set loose here in just a few minutes of time. Let's take a look at how the schedule is faring out so far. So far, we've seen a busy race at the Nürburgring Grand Prix Strike Circuit. We've also seen plenty of attrition that popped up from the Autodroma International Enzo Edino Ferrari last time out in late November. Of course, this race coming in just a few weeks before we go to our first and only street circuit of the season at Detroit's Grand Prix Circuit on Belle Isle. To say the schedule is a Reaching its very busy point where potential disaster could happen is an understatement, Stefan. If you want to win a championship, you need to hit these next few races off well. Yeah, especially uh, coming into Detroit with so many cars that we have on the track. We might see a little bit of a problem spots throughout the the race there at Detroit. So most definitely that will be marked very thickly into everybody's calendar that January 8th. Uh, date there for Detroit because let's be honest street racing is always a different monster to circuit racing Absolutely, let's talk a bit about the championships coming into today It is important to note that the 170 car is your team points leader However, when it comes to that team remember RSR by butt kick was the team Sean Campbell started with before moving to Delta Sport the next round So that car already on the entry sheets has been switched over for Campbell to Delta Sport technically. Team Ford Zilla though keeping it close, but Team Hoichenveld in the top three. Precision Racing Esports in a close battle for fourth on back though. After a couple rounds, German Sim Racing, spelled Esports, Maniti Racing, Team Ford Zilla all doing well so far. Maniti, remember, started the season with a victory, zero points the next round. Your Sims Esports and German Sim Racing round out the top 10 of the point standings so far in Division 1. Division 2, German Sim Racing at the top of those points. Deutsche Panamon Esports coming off a race in the winter 24 hours to Nürburgring where they flipped upside down. Second in Division 2 points. Strana Nomad also has been quick so far in third. Delta V Racing the only other team inside triple digit points. TNT Esports is close to that though. With RD Simsport, iLiveries, Vibe Sports, GTR Esports, Team Hoichenveld, and Albert Sim Racing, the top 10. In Division 3, P1 Esport, two second places? That sees them at the top of the point standings over Pastrana Nomad. Rusty Spatula is a fair bit back in third, also in double digit, triple digit points, should say, for a racing GTR Esports in Precision Racing Esports. Mag Performance Junior, Olympus Esports V Racers, and the World of Sim Racing team round out that top 10. Let's look at how the point standings are entering today's round. Remember, drivers competing for prizes as part of those championships as well, which both three pedal set sim pedals, ultimate plus, include a big point for your Division 1 champion. Division 2 picks up the Hoichenfeld three pedal set sim pedal sprint, including the base point, and the Hoichenfeld three pedal set sim pedal sprint, including the base point for Division 3's champion. With that qualifying is underway, drivers have 20 minutes to be able to set their fastest times around the circuit. Already a couple minutes in, some of these drivers, in fact, most of these drivers, already starting up their respective first times up on the board with the speeds. 
So it's going to be interesting, Stefan, how some of these drivers fare up today. Some of these drivers looking to turn things around, per se, for their teams. Others looking to try and keep up the consistency at a track, which it can be difficult to break away, let's say. Yeah, it is highly difficult to break away. You basically only have the infield where you really can make a difference uh, for these cars. And obviously we know the draft is very, very long, one and a half seconds. Uh, you still feel quite the pull uh, from the car in front of you. So that's why we see most of the field spread out around that one, one and a half second mark right now. So everybody catches uh, that draft, except for obviously teammates like we have the Fortilla cars here running in close formation trying to tow each other around getting some good and nice lap times. And like you said, yes, um, it's a very big point already into two races into this season. We have German Sim Racing in the Division 2 lead, 180 points as well as P1 Esports in Division 3. Um, both of these teams two times second place and look where they got them. They are nearly 40 points uh, away from second place. So far doing well the Team Ford Silver Cards amongst the first times in. The interesting thing is going to be for some of these drivers and teams today, some different drivers you've seen, Josh Poulain behind the wheel. You've seen drivers like Mary as well, Tanks compete in this car throughout the season so far. It's going to be interesting if you end up trying to switch things up per se on trying to pick up the tempo for some of these teams, change up the drivers compared to the previous rounds to fall. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously, uh, Imola is always a different story. You you kind of, in a series like this, you have to take Imola out of it and, and look at it from a different perspective because it is such a, for GT3 cars, such a weird track um, with, with so many chicanes fast and slow. Um, you never really know what you get with Imola. It can be a very good race, it can be a very bad race. We have seen some attrition there. Um, so, gonna be interesting going into Daytona how some of these teams are gonna bounce back from all the misfortune that they might have experienced. By the way, one thing I just see we have right now oh. Division 3 car. Oh, as we have Mario's Holy Tykes spinning there. Uh, Rusty Spatulas, the 313 in ninth place right now. That's impressive from a Division 3 car. Still very early on in the session. The interesting with today's practice, it was fairly tight on the board within about two, three seconds to spread. So that is something to keep an eye on. The draft here taking a look with Sean Campbell. Not too many cars in front. They did work a little bit on down the front with the Ford of Ethan Bass. It looks like he's just going to peel into the pit lane. Something to keep an eye on. The confidence in the pit lane during the race in itself today. You see how much break he needed there. Yeah, you really need to be confident on the brakes going into uh, the pit lane here at Daytona because you want to break as late as possible with the high speeds uh, that you're obviously carrying down the dog leg here. You have a massive loss of time uh, traveling through pit lanes, so you want to minimize that as much as possible. But of course, the penalty is harsh if you speed into pit lane. Uh, 15 seconds, obviously the time penalty is anyway, and since you're taking that right away on your pit stop as well, uh, I think it's like 45 seconds if I remember correctly, because you, um, you get well, added that pit lane traverse time. Well, technically you're supposed to be in the pit lane for one minute, and they will check that, remember. Which is going to be the important thing. You go quicker than a minute, you're getting penalized. It happened to a couple drivers, remember, last round. True, true that as well. Yeah, so uh, it's just so many factors that you that you need to count, account for. Obviously, that one minute, uh, and then obviously uh, you don't want to uh, spend your time as well on top with a penalty for speeding into the play. Take a look with Spencer Ritzman. This is JTR Esports' 345 car. Early 33rd in the qualifying session. And one thing to think about with some of these cars today, the updates on the sim, the new build came out about nearly two weeks ago, Stefan, and one of the major changes was to these types of cars in terms of how they handle with the tire model, that was updated and changed. New damage model also enabled for GT3 cars. Yeah, it should be very, very interesting. It's gonna be the first race that I'm gonna see myself 
with the GT3 cars with the new and updated damage model. So, uh, gonna be interesting how um, damage sensitive some of these cars are gonna be because, let's be honest, even though they don't have a lot of aero, um, it still is gonna affect these guys if they take on too much damage. Based on what we've seen in the winter 24 hours of the Nürburgring and some of the other events recently, Stefan, it seems a part of that damage is going to be chassis damage. A lot of drivers have tended to break their suspensions as of late with the new model. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that, if I'm honest, especially at a track like the Nürburgring. Uh, suspension damage is easily taken. Uh, thankfully, Daytona doesn't have those big curbs, but still, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact or contact right onto the wheel itself, that is always going to damage your suspension in some way or another, so most definitely they will have to be careful about that, especially in the first few laps when the whole field is together, heading into the bus stop and turn one for the first time with a huge amount of draft. Now we might just see a little bit of shyness from people around that some others that are a little bit more aggressive might try to take advantage of. Looking back at the Team Fordzilla cars, Tom Burns still at the top of the board overall by about a half a tenth. The big thing is Right now, Tom Burns trying to back off a little bit to feed this 199 the draft this time. Currently, Lang is in 8th position, but can't close up to his teammate even when he's been lifting up the throttle. Yeah, it's interesting how what they're doing here. They're only running at 260 right now through turn 4 here off the oval. Um, going obviously down the hard line to take as much speed through it as possible going into turn one it doesn't really affect your lap time too much it's just prone to make more mistakes into turn one obviously heavily off camera on the outside but the camera does help you on the inside so good start to the lap by those two let's see how we are gonna see those guys involved well cleaner taking a look at the 148 machine second overall so far Hoytenville quietly has done really well in the points. Third in the standings. They so far have done so with consistency because a majority of those who did well at Nürburgring did very badly at Imola, as we talked about. Yeah, I said Imola is just such a different beast to pretty much any other track that we have in Europe with those very... Uh, uh, common chicanes, very high curbs as well, just doesn't really give you too much of flow like other uh, European tracks. So you can't really never uh, tell how your race is going to shape up at a track like Imola. Uh, you always just have to go on and take it as it is. I like to come down the pit lane. They fed some draft though to Maurice Holy Tights, who's up to eighth because of that draft on the board. Take a look back at Pulling. Bullen, a little bit closer now as they go for a hard charge lap. They have space. Jason Dilworth is trying the banking around them, keep in mind. We'll see if this does indeed help them. The speed's picking up dramatically this time on the hard charge lap. Already up to fifth in the division. There's the lip, there's the pullout, and there's the pull. Yeah, very good stuff by the two Fordzilla cars. Perfect uh, teammate help as well for the 199 of Josh Poulain. Much praise most definitely has been gone out there from Josh towards his teammate. And you see some of the German sim racing cars helping each other out as well. You see Adam Wolkowitz currently inside the top three in the division, working back and forth with basketball with Locatello. Twelve. Take a look at Osper T. Copper. Early fourth on the board, trying to find half a second to be able to find some draft. They do have a vector sim racing car, Ted Lovendick up the road. A little bit aggressive into the bus stop from Oscar, but comes out the other side quite nicely. This could be good up here from the 171 right now sitting in fourth place. Top five, all Division 1 drivers, and then we have four Division two cars that is very very awesome to see also they're very close together 
to be expected when it comes to the draft certificates. The top 10 separate by seven tenths. Copper's time invalidated. Even then, it would not have been an improvement if it counted that time. Amongst those drivers doing well in qualifying, fifth in the Division Two for my significance, is the Delta Fee Racing Car. And you can see the train they have built up. It's led by Sean Campbell, but they have another Delta V car in front of them who's trying to work around Campbell. Rusty Spatulas is trying to hold on to the draft as well in this train. They're interesting. We're seeing such big train form here on the qualifying. But desperate times mean desperate measures, and we only have six and a half minutes remaining. So probably just one or two more runs, depending on where our drivers are right now in oh, their no. court run. There's a car in the middle of the track as they run into it. That was Meg Performance Junior White, who just pulled out in Le Mans right in front of this pack. Johan Martin Mayer was able to dodge, but he has no draft down for the banking. And this is going to hurt the 260 here right now, sitting in 13th place. Only about a tenth off anyway of the top four. But Johan Ma Martin Mayer directly into pit lane. Going to get another run for himself. One of the teams looking to do much better today is this 135 car. This is Ingersoll Rand GT3 Sprint 2. The Ingersoll Rand cars have had zero luck this season so far, it seems. Yeah, right now sitting in 15th and 19th in the Vision 1 class. These guys most definitely look for a better race than what they had going for them right now. Only sitting on 29 and 16 points respectively. Uh, yeah, the 135 most definitely looking much better today than they have been in the first races. Look what's meanwhile keeping an eye now to third in the class with the help of the drafting partner. Massimo Locatello going up to the banking this time, opening up the door. You also have Sol Sanchez Flores trying to put up a better time than 34th place. And it looks like they might be trying to assist Locatello, who is outside the top 10 in qualifying so far. Flores does not follow their draft in the backdrop, now does. Lap times count 144.8, 145.8. And a 144.6, no one improved in that group. As a result of that, it looks like they might line up this time instead for it. Yeah, not sure what they're trying to do here in the uh, GSR cars. That's very, very weird setup here. Following this close and not even giving really draft to your teammate there. Uh, maybe they're just, you know, not wanting to... Um, alter their pace right now with that draft and just content where they're sitting right now in the middle of the field. Thomas Avancini was the driver who we just seen or one of his teammates car should say we seen rejoin in front of one of the previous packs. This car is in 24th position but the tough thing's going to be for today a lot of the division two drivers with the help of the draft in part are way up the running order Stefan today. And we've seen if you can qualify well in Division 2 and keep it clean, it's a massive buffer over the rest of your competitors. Yeah, most definitely right now it's a 2 tenth, 1 tenth gap to 5th place. And actually the GT, uh, the Division 2 leaders actually got split now by Element Super Racing, the 372 ninth place, same time as the 246 of German Sim Racing. Uh, so very good stuff from our advanced division right now with about three minutes left in qualifying. Marius hold tights. Keep, keep an eye on. You can see him just running on the banking. We'll see if he likes to come down to the pit lane. Good qualifying. George Bateman so far. Max Rainmower looking to bounce back after what we've seen last time from. Here's the thing. 15th in the session currently. Not going to cut it today. Now it seems like Max Riedmüller a little bit struggling here with picking up the right draft. Like right now you can see there's not really a car in front of him. It just, I think it dived down now to the racing line as well. So he's getting a little bit of draft here on this lap. But I'm not even sure if that is a fast lap as well. Yes, he goes down below the yellow line here trying to get some draft at least. Um, just 
not having much of a luck here in the 101 of Manichi Racing. Coming up to two minutes to go in the qualifying session. The session breezing on through. Let's see, see what the time is for the 101. We've seen usually being more organized is a big thing. If anything, it's feeding draft to Gregory Thompson in the JTR Esports 268 who tries to make a move. 143.8, JTR Esports absolutely benefits from that. Maniti only goes up one spot. Yeah, and that's exactly the thing here, Daytona. You can be as um, organized as possible as a team. If you're just not getting out at the right times, it just doesn't matter how organized you are. Uh, if you just don't get the timing right, or you have the bad luck of everybody that you want to get into behind in the draft just decides to pit or stop the lap and slow down. And so you all of a sudden have no draft anymore like we had seen here from the 101. They positioned themselves behind a car, which could have been great draft, but they decided to abandon their lap and suddenly they were uh, they're fighting against the wind. Masbo Larcatello does bump up his time to get along with the teammates. They decide to wreck the cars, so that will end off their qualifying session. Tom Burns, meanwhile, trying to feed a little trap before they practice the pit entry. Stay coordinated. This is why you practice. They nearly run each other over. About 30 seconds coming up in the session. So not too many drivers have time to try and complete their laps here, Stavon, before the checker flag waves. Amongst those hoping to complete the lap again are some of those machines we kept an eye on the 260. Delta V. Yeah, the good thing is, though, if you start your lap within the next 15 seconds, you're still going to be able uh, to finish your lap. I don't think that a 260 is going to be one of those cars that he is capable of going there unless they find a super boost. They're not going to get there in time to start another lap. Check a flag waving in the session currently. So the drivers currently on circuit will have the opportunity to complete their laps. About 15 drivers have that chance. Johan Martin Mayer does not bump up. Frederick Poches. Only 49th was trying to help him there. In other news, Element Sim Racing Water, top spot currently in Division 3. Rusty Spatulas currently second on the board. They are amongst one of the final cars who can set a time, but no draft to help them. And here's the significance with that. They have at least four rows of separations to form. They need to try and cover to get to Element Sim Racing Water. Yeah, and four rows, as we know, Daytona, it can be quickly made up, but at the same time, if you're running into some problem or a bottleneck in turn one, all of a sudden, four rows seems like a lot of cars that are, uh, four rows of cars are a lot of cars that are between yourself and the leader of your class. Can confirm a couple different protests have been filed and com confirmed. Love 46, Got 242 had an impediment felony, a drive through penalty they'll have to serve. They were already in probation. Self Sanchez Flores, meanwhile, as a result of an incident during the qualifying, that's the world of sim racing car, a 60 second stop and hold to start the event for them today. So, two drivers at least have been penalized so far as we get ready to close out qualifying only three cars left on circuit two of them are delta v entries in the pure sims esports car who now all come in ex into the pit lane so qualifying to a close to fawn and the times the closest they've been throughout the entire field all season yeah, and we love to see that, Justin. That means excitement for the next hour here of racing. I'm ready. I hope our viewers are too. So drivers will have a few minutes to warm up and get their setups into final tuning before they get the green flag for today's race. In your opinion, what are some of the keys to victory to be able to win here in the high banks of Daytona at such a high draft facility? 
Patience is going to be number one key here, Justin. You want to be patient. You want to pick your opportunities. Yes, with the big draft, uh, we have a lot of passing opportunities, especially right here, turn three can be an easy overtaking pass turn one obviously also a great opportunity but you have to be careful you have to be patient because not every time you're close to a competitor and you think you can make that overtake it is going to be a good overtaking because you're always gonna lose time in that sense and if you're having to fight too much against that other driver because of you wanting to overtake them but they're not wanting to relinquish that place to you you're all of a sudden losing one second two seconds three seconds and without realizing yes you have gained that one position but you have lost the major draft and you're probably never gonna catch back up to the train ahead so drivers have about seven minutes or so at the most to be able to warm up and prepare for today for the race briefings coming into this event session does have some built-in buffer time just in case but the interesting amongst some of the drivers and how they qualified here today thanks to what we've seen in that respective session about esports 31st we've seen good speed from our son asimo sentosi throughout the season deep in the field a lot of the other drivers though will have to make up plenty of ground because of mistakes in qualifying that's going to be huge track position if you were at the back of the field today german sim racing blue for example 41st of all well, yeah that is a lot of ground that they will have to make up there from 41st and you know that that's the thing once again a uh, group of drivers and and uh, as a team as a whole uh german sim racing a very good good organized crew but you just sometimes have those moments where you're trying so hard to get everything set up right but just people start abandoning in the labs and all of a sudden you're once again left without uh, any draft and you find yourself so far down just simply because you didn't get the opportunity ever uh, to have that draft in your favor or sometimes even uh, it can happen that on the bus that we know it's super easy to run just a little bit wide on the exit cut over the grass and your uh, your lap doesn't count anymore that can happen too obviously on your fast lap so it just sometimes doesn't work your way but that still doesn't mean that they're out of contention we have a hour of racing here we have a pit stop that they have to serve and with pit stops always strategies come into play and hey who knows strategy might be key if you're far down that you can get up the field again. Got more penalties just coming in. We've seen some troubles before. A drive through penalty for Adam Wokowitz has just been awarded for the 246. So one of the German sim racing cars just awarded a penalty. As well, the 225 car we've seen involved in the troubles earlier. That was with that stack, I believe, with the the uh, V Racers cars, a 122nd stop and hold penalty. By the way, the reason for the 246 penalty is impeding cars with the back as a result of collision. That was in that situation to drive for penalty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that uh, Patrick Hinkson got such a penalty from that. Uh, I mean, he did, yeah, ruin at the lap quite a bit there of uh, two cars, I think that was. So, yeah, uh, 120 second stop and hold penalty. Well, that's pretty much a race car because that's nearly a full lap here at Daytona. And with the um, pit lane traverse time, it is a full lap penalty that they're going to receive here. And that's Quasar Sim Racing in the first penalty, one of the German Sim Racing cars in the second one. Drivers were told moments ago that the session will be advancing towards grinning in the next about couple minutes. So these drivers finishing up their final preparations and at this mark, who are some of the teams you think you have to watch for today? We've seen a lot of Division Two drivers up front. Who are you watching to try and pull off with the win today? I think I think it's it's very hard to, to really tell who's gonna win this or who has a chance. I, I think everybody inside the top 10 has a chance here because they're only not even seven tenths away from the fastest lap in qualifying. Um, so 
it is gonna be very very hard to tell who has real chance we'll have to wait for the first few minutes to develop and see who can catch that trade for first place then we can most definitely at least cycle in those guys of who are in contention to win here at the Daytona International Speed. Don't forget that run up to the front stretch expect to be crazy. The run up to the horseshoes expect to go crazy. Should be a fun race. It should be a wild race. 50 different teams have entered here at Daytona International Speedway. Let's take a look at the grid as these drivers finish up their warm-ups. Josh Bowen starts on the pole today. The fastest time in the session, a 1.43.3. Tom Burns helped him get that time. He's in second in the session. Team Hoisinveld starts in third today with Phil Cleaner. Then it's Sean Campbell, the points leader in Division 1 and 4. Oscar T. Comper starts in fifth for OTK by butt kicker. And Dustin Smith picks up the Division 2 pole with the help some of the cards in front. Alessandro Caniero for Ingersoll ran today behind the wheel in 135 and 7. How about this though in qualifying? Blue Bob Ariascovia finished in 8th in the session. However, remember there's a penalty for that driver. Jason Dilworth in 9th, 10th, Marcus Fox for Element Sim Racing, the top Division 3 driver. Then it's Florian Hahn in 11th spot today. Alongside Marius Holt Tykes for Deutsche Payment Esports. One of the Air German Sim Racing cars, Massimo Locatello starts 13th with David Lorenzi in 14th. Then 15th, Beniti Racing started off the season with a W, looking to charge from that spot alongside Delta V Racing's Johan Martin Mayer. Niels May starts in 17th for GSE Racing by ACI, and Rusty Spatula is deep in the field, second in Division 18. Benjamin Openkowski for WS Racing Esports 19th and Thomas Cope, top 20 for Olympus. Precision Racing Esports, Dominic Olivier but bounce back from some rough moments in some of the early action as of late, but Jake Shuri in TNT Esports in 22nd. Sandro Marsani starts in 23rd for I Livery's Vibe Sports, then it's Ali Torres for Ingersoll Ren 24th. 25th went to Thomas Avanzini for Make Performance Jr. While Team Hoichinveld's Division 2 car, 26. Caden Ben, we haven't seen him in a while. In that car for Pure Sims, he's back today in 27th. Then it is First Motorsports, 28th. Toronto Nomads, Division 3 car, 29th. And the 4, Division 2, in 30th, 1.1 seconds off the pole. Alessandro Santosi deep in the field today. Keep an eye on that machine in 31st. With Frederick Bergdorf for P1 Esport, the point leader for Division 3, 32nd. Absolute Motorsport, Eastwood Jr. in 33rd, and Ted Lowen Dick. Should be an eventful one for that 227 from 34th. Marco Silva for V Racers in Division 3 in 35th, and RSR by Butt Care from the 163 car in 36. 37 with the World Sim Racing team in qualifying. They do have a penalty to serve, remember, from that spot. Jan Vollmer starts in 38th position, 39th Patrick Hickston, and Drew Swank in 40th. Dennis Brzezik, the last of the Division 1 drivers, deep in the pack in 41st. Shay McNeely for Aquara Racing in 42nd. Chris Chatterton starts 43rd today with Emil Winbow in the 44th position. Spencer Ritzma will start 45th with Alistar Cork in 46th. Joe Bronze and Nick McLaughlin, a surprising start for him, deep in the pack, 48th in the grid slots. That leaves two other drivers who entered today's race. All drivers taking times. Delta B Racing's 284 and Make Performance Junior White dead last two seconds off the pole. That's what top to bottom at today's running order here from iRacing's virtual Daytona International Speedway Reds Road Course. 11 turns in the sim, 3.56 miles around this facility. Today's weather conditions mostly quality around the facility. Currently, the air temp at 26 degrees Celsius, that's 78 degrees Fahrenheit. 29 degrees Celsius is the respective temp to keep an eye on for the track. 84 Fahrenheit, it has reached as high as 86 Fahrenheit. There is a bit of wind to deal with today. It's a crosswind down the straightaways. The wind currently blowing directly towards the flag stand rather than towards the direction down the straightaways. So that should make things a little bit squirrely 
coming out of the corners. Yeah, and it, it's not really going to help through the bus stop. Uh, we also have to think about that. Um, so, going to be interesting how that uh, might have changed the approach for some of these guys if they have chosen a, a very uh, low rake setup. I mean, we all know that these guys have uh, basically wanted to um, yeah, remove the rear wing uh, anyway, so it's all going to be about how much rake have they taken and if that is going to affect them a little bit now through the bus stop, especially when they for the first time go full blast into turn one and then subsequently into the bus stop with all that draft happening. One more penalty just awarded before today's starting grid, the 248, Andre Rajkovic given a penalty for impeding a fellow competitor in the bus stop chicane. They will also have to serve a drive-through penalty in this event. So several teams in the mid-pack especially have to come down to the pit lane. But with that, the drivers getting ready to double up once they come out of the bus stop chicane here, Stefan. Your final thoughts before we take the green flag here today. Well, it's going to be a lot decided inside the first three laps. How are people going to handle turn one and obviously also the bus stop? Are we going to see some mayhem? Are we going to see chaos? Or is everybody just going to stay put and content for the first few laps, trying to not damage their cars with the new damage model as well? Well, a lot of thoughts go into this, but as we know, once the green flag flies, those thoughts go directly out the window. Start in control of race controls. Casper Decor able to get the launch. Soon as race control disengages their in sim push to talk button, the drivers have the green flag wave. 50 drivers making their way to the World Center of Racing. And off 2022's calendar year off with some high speeds around the high banks in Daytona Beach, Florida. This is the Iver GT Sprint Series, powered by Hutchinveld, the third round of the season. Glad to have you with us here on Rainspot TV for today's action. Team Fordzilla sweeping the front row. Green flag is that we're underway from Daytona. And a good start for Josh Poole and his teammate keeps him alongside two by two as they make their way into the infield for the first time. Some drivers going three, four wide of the backdrop. Exactly how Ford Zilla would want this to go. Single file up to the first horseshoe. Gregory Humpson amongst those diving. One car off the racetrack. The GSC oh, and somebody racing. stuck in the barrier. Yes, it's one of the German sim racing cars who already has to tow the GSC machine able to get back on the rings track. So of several cars in the first horseshoe crash up to the second horseshoe as several drivers slide one driver up to Ooh. the parking lot. Who was that? It's Reykovic, the 248 of Team Hoysevelt. I don't think I've ever seen someone end up going off into the RVs and to the parking lot before. The Ingersoll Rand car holding on to seventh. Several drivers having to dodge competitors coming back to the main track. The Team Fordzilla cars able to keep it clean, bump drafting to pull away off to the mark. And we already have the first few separations in the pack all the way down to Henry Mittenen of Rusty Spatulas. Uh, that's the first big group. Yes, we have a bit of a gap there from uh, fourth to fifth and uh, from second to third, but I'm pretty sure that that's going to be closed in once again by all these drivers, especially with that long and big snake that is now going down into the dog leg for the second time, first time under full power. Vincent penalties have been awarded, by the way. Left 46 amongst those serving the penalties. And Ford Zilla all running nearly a second up for, for Team Hoytsenveld. There's a look at Olympus Esports serving the drive through Top break for her because that was their best qualifying performance by far this season. That'll put them way back in the pack. Here's a look at some of the side-by-side -side inset pack. And more oh. cars in trouble. Two Division I drivers, Ingersoll Rand's luck continues to go bad. Precision Racing Esports collected as well. 
And hopefully somebody tells that uh, Precision Racing team there that they have lost the bumper. Oh, they have lost way more than just the bumper. Dominic Oliviere, uh, that is going to be a complete write-off for that Mercedes. It's been about a week for them. Dominic Oliviere had a horrible race in PRL competition. Continues here into Eifert competition, it seems. On the bright side for the Ingersoll Rand team, they still have a car in seventh. Now, let's take a look at what happened, and this is one of the wildest rides you'll see on the sim. How about breaking through a fence, going through a bunch of RVs, and no, he did not tow. Breaks through the fence a second time, turns around, goes backwards to get back to the track opening. And that is how that car is dead last. This is the first time I've seen a GT3 spin like that through that uh, uh, left kink. I've seen multiple LMP spin through there, but never a GT3. Very, very interesting from Rykovic uh, that he lost it that way. But I think he also got held very tight there through that kink. And that might have been a contributing factor on the cold tires. Look at the bright side. At least the RVs weren't solid, right? <laughs> yeah, that would have been very annoying for Andre right there. What does happen here through the bus stops? Oh, there's a spinner in the pack. Missed by everybody, thankfully, as he nearly comes back on the track. Very lucky to be able to keep it out from the second portion of the curbing. But the top three breaking away. Team Ford still has two cars in Team Hoytsyveld's Division 1 car. Already nearly a second plus ahead of Sean Campbell. Let's take a look at their replay. Rewind. Oh and my make goodness. It one. Oh, how unlucky. Fights it for so long. And oh, even more join in on the action there. Has held it together so long, but eventually the banking transition, the very steep transition there, caught him out in the end. That was a V-Racers car involved in an incident, I believe, in the Division 3 entry. So the intrusion building up, but as you can see, the pack's already losing ground in regards to the second group. Here's what Ingersoll ran in. Wow. That's that's rough right there. And the 111 with such a uh, unfortunate impact. They lose the rear wing, but also they completely lost the suspension on the right rear. A collapse then the wheel is not facing anywhere where you want a rear wheel to face. Oscar T. Copper helping out his former alliance mate. Technically still think they're alliance per se, but remember there was the switch over for Campbell. But Campbell seems to be struggling a bit to get up to the Team Hoysenfeld car to close back up that trap fully to remain the one second plus. They're just barely a second and a half back. How important is to make sure you get that type of help around the racetrack? We're seeing that plenty already from Copper. Devon. We, we lost to Fawn. Again. Give credit to Gregory Hubson, who is also in this respective pack. You also have Nick Madsen trying to keep up. Let's take a look at more trouble. And one driver, see that blue car was stopped off the track, one slid off the circuit. At least 10 cars had to dodge the latter car in that incident. About to say that assistance, very critical. Team Ford still one of the few teams who are linked up right now to be able to help each other. I'm pretty sure they're also the only team that is able to do that uh, it helps them out but the good thing is for for the uh for the neutral viewer here that uh, philip klinger is still uh, ra ra running straight with them as we have a porsche facing the wrong way uh, after the bus stop ted lowendick involved ingersoll ran gt sprint one involved that was thomas avanzini in the mag performance junior black car in the infield well, I think Ted Lowendick may have expected this race to go much longer because... Why is he damaged? This is why. 
Oh my goodness, yeah, nowhere to go for the traffic there. Then Lomadex first start of the season. Vector car. Ends quick, and there goes the Ingersoll Rand car again. Oh my goodness, just can't stay out of trouble there. That is highly unfortunate for them. Two times in the bus stop. Thank you very much. Patrician really piling up again. Three divisions on the pylon. Elmet Sim Racing Water currently has a two second buffer for that division. Division two is currently having Thor Leader try and work in the second pack. Of course, you have Division 1 drivers trying to break away from the rest of the pack about half a tenth per lap. There's Division 2. And the thing is, the pushing car is able to very much save a ton of fuel, Stefan. Hard clutching coasting. Oh, yeah, most definitely. If, if you're the following car, you are going to save tons of fuel compared to the guy you are driving behind. So Oscar is loving this right now over Sean Campbell. And that could also make them jump all the way up to the leading pack because let's remember uh, here we have three cars that I'm pretty sure Philip Klinger in the team hoist belt, the 148, uh, is in the same situation as the 268 here uh, of Gregory Hovsen, uh that uh, he can save so much fuel uh, with the other two guys. Oh, uh, the 120 uh, uh, flies by there on the inside of the 268. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be very interesting to see how all of that is gonna develop with all the fuel saving uh, once the pit stops roll around the corner. Keep in mind with all of this, Jason Dilworth, second in the division, under two seconds back, trying to work with some of these cars too still to be able to leapfrog some of them. Right now, the next driver up in the line is Massimo Locatello. One of the Division 1 drivers, and then they get up to Ingersoll Rand, and then they have JTR Esports. So if they stay the relative distance, Dilworth's in a good spot to battle for the Division 2 lead, if he can find a way to leap from. Yeah, you know, it's... it's the, the problem is uh, with Jason Dilworth, he's in a different pack to Gregor uh, So. It is going to be difficult for him to, to get up to your Division 2 leader right now of the JTR Esports car. Um, because it most definitely seems like while Gregory seems to slowly be struggling with the pace that the three ahead of him in the pack are going, uh, he's able to cling on to it while Massi Massimo Locatello of the German Sim Racing car that uh, Dilworth is following uh, he is not able to go the pace of Alejandro Castaneda, uh, who is slowly pulling away from those two without any draft. Insult to injury, by the way, for the 134, which is an Ingersoll Rand car. They have been awarded a penalty because they left the starting formation before the start line. Drive through if they can get the car fixed. The Ingersoll Rand car passed by the German Sim Racing Machine, the Sprint 2 machine. Hold off Jason Dilworth's advance. They go back single file. That helps out the third car in Division 2. Go to payment, monkey butt. I uh, still feel like that last part of the name is added there because they want me to say that. <laughs> that might as well be true uh, there. Uh, and you know, uh, one, one thing that I have to give uh, to Locatello there, uh, he saw the opportunity on Castaneda to overtake him, made it work, and he is able to actually stay ahead uh, of him as well, while we have seen the Mercedes to be much stronger than Locatello through the infield on the past few laps. So, yeah, good on him, and let's see if the BMW now heading this train can do something uh, to catch the second group, as the first one is most definitely uh, much, much faster right now than all the other groups behind. Good point to think about, by the way, with some of the bump traps we've seen early on with the new damage model. How would that impact the potential bumping? Because a couple of drivers, if I remember right, when it first came out, did report getting damage from a bump draft to the back end of their car, just being too hard on the bump. 
Yeah, that, that is something that you have to be worried about now. You can't just stay in the throttle anymore. You have to be just a little bit more careful with your bumping, just like you have to be in NASCAR, where you're also not able to go flat out into the bump draft because you're most definitely going to damage yourself, but also the opposition that you're going to try to bump draft here as the clouds are continuing to roll in more and more. And we actually are quite dark now with all the cloud cover. Uh, that you're getting. Oh no, on the front stretch. A bad spot to spin around. A second car's off of the grass as well. And it was a car slow, slowly getting away from the scene as well. So there must have been at least a three or two car pileup in yep. that one. That was Johan Martin Mayer we've seen backing up. Oh! Oh my, my goodness. goodness. You usually see that in stock car racing, not in the road portion portion of the track. Oh, and a second car just slid in there hard. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What can you say? So many drivers lucky though in that incident that they were able to avoid all of that because that could have been the big one at Daytona. Keep in mind both those cars are still in the infield waiting for approval from race control to tow. We'll have to see if what happens from that. Let's take a look at Rusty Spatulas meanwhile. Henry Mittenen. And it's about for a Division 2 driver trying to figure out what they can try and do. Downside is... They've lost a ton of ground already, 14th and 15th overall. And there goes his help. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's going to be able to hold the position. No, never mind. Here it is well with slow down penalty. Oscar Copper coming out of the bus stop recently last time by. The 171. Required them to lose some ground still the drivers from the infield have just been told they can tow we stay green yeah, that is very good now we can see those two cars still standing there uh, should hopefully pop away any second then uh, and yeah Oscar T. Cooper with that uh, slowdown through the bus which he did surf quite extensively on the banking uh, not the choice I would have made. It probably would have surfed it into turn one because that's uh, the least amount of time that you then lose. Uh, Cooper has come back to the third group now, uh, headed by or was headed by Locatello, has very slightly pulled away from it again, coming out of turn two on the oval. Uh, but yeah, second group now, three cars. Down to the penalties, Nick McLaughlin has just been awarded a 20-second stop and hold. That's the 311 car. Nick McLaughlin has spun right on cue as soon as he got the penalty. So another penalty awarded. That was in result of contact with the 312. This is the second he got the penalty. Maybe he got a little bit spooked by the penalty message, but it's also super easy to spin out there as the very outside of turn six is heavily bang off camber. Uh, so you can lose it there on the bumps uh, down on the uh, curb at the exit onto the bank. Taking a look at this three car pack as they make their way up to the infield, meanwhile. Yeah, have Element Sim Racing Fire in the middle of it. RD Sim Sport leaving the pack. Bowers Motorsports Aries trying to find a way forward in said pack. This is 18th to 20th. 28 spots gain, keep in mind. For RD Sim Sport, with all the chaos so far, they are your biggest mover by far. Yeah, and, and you know, one thing that I have to say, I'm a little bit surprised by how much our field has spread out into small little. Uh, fighting packs so early into the race. We're only 20 minutes, 21 minutes now into the race. Um, and yeah, we have pretty much all the field separated into small little groups. No real big uh, fighting packs here left to talk about. It's just those small groups, four or five cars at the max, except for 
that long snake that is now gonna starting to happen between fourth place and all the way down to what is that uh 13th place with marcus r fox element sim racing water uh being the end of that yeah it, it's an interesting development that i honestly didn't see coming well, we have seen a lot of the packs broken up by attrition in part but on the other hand if this is one of those race tracks where you have to be very quick and precise right and the yeah, end feels so geez. critical you don't have a lot of corners so you have to be precise every single time and we know daytona it, it looks easy on paper but a lot of these corners are actually off the camper uh, on critical parts of, of it as well, so uh, you just you have to be precise with your inputs, you have to be uh, perfect with your inputs um, and soft with them as well because you want to save fuel, you want to save the tires uh, for when it really is gonna count. Keep in mind the interesting when it comes to this respective train as well as some of the counterparts just holding on to a thread of this ground. They are already five seconds behind the lead group. What can you do to try and close that when your competitors are three, four tenths quicker a lap? Um you know, you you could just say drive faster, uh, but that's just not gonna be the option right here. It's just uh that there's nothing you can really do about it. I mean, like we see there, Benjamin Opunkowski, if that is that fourth car in line there, uh, they are already lapped. They are in 42nd place. They don't have anything to do with our top three drivers yet. Even though they are a lap down 42nd uh, and a Division 2 car, they are still able to keep on close proximities with our top three drivers just because they do have that draft that tells it just how important the draft really is. You can be 42nd, uh, but still, you are gonna be able to drive with the leaders just because of how immensely important the draft is in G3 racing, and especially here with uh, those very, very long straights. In the backdrop, there is just a switch, by the way. You may notice Nick Madsen's blue car passed by Sean Campbell's white red car. So there is some impatience, keep in mind, starting to come up here. The pit stop window was still about 25, 30 minutes out. And that seems to be a major difference in part. More patience for these three, partly because two of them are teammates. The other thing is, too, when you have a lot of shuffling in a pack such as the one behind, it checks everyone up when you make that pass, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the one thing. Uh, patience and as I said it's two teammates that are driving here for the lead and you know uh, at the same time uh, Philip Klinger he's just doing what he can do best he does let those two ahead of him just drive he has the pace to stay with them uh, he is gonna save his equipment he's gonna save tires he's gonna save massive amounts of fuel just by sitting there and, and letting those two do what they're gonna do because you know with how much fuel you're saving you're gonna have a much double Deutsche payment oh no that's a car that was heavy to the wall top three in the division take a look at the left side tires oh my goodness oh, oh what a bounce back and they might be having to wait for a tow or a hole to go through. That is mandatory damage repair. Yeah, with, with that amount of damage, they're most definitely going to be out of contention, I'm, I'm sure. Take a look at the Pastrana Nomad machine. Stand-up Nomad, I should say, for Dilworth and Hamilton. But the group caution is out! Oh! The 287 has triggered the first caution of the day. And this is unexpected for some. We know the cautions can come out in the series. How about this for the caution flag though? A rare one for the season so far. Yeah, most definitely and 
uh, what is that going to do for your strategy? Because first three guys, all of a sudden, they're going to have to fight with the second pack again. And they were so nicely running away from... Yeah, uh, this is going to throw the strategy that everybody had, especially uh, Philip Klinger in the 148 right out the window once again plan b c d e or even f now needs to take charge well the reason for the caution per the rule book if there is a card that has the potential to affect other cards in the race if it's stranded in a place that can be reached by marshals realistically per se and or if it tows from the place where it cannot be reached by the marshals obviously two feet off the racing line of the bus stop is somewhere where you can't be reached by the marshals during a green flag it's a standard i racing safety car is the ruling from race control so this will make things interesting how do you play this the pit lane is not open yet yeah you're gonna have to take another have an interesting burn out there from our base car driver um, yeah, they're, they're gonna have to wait another lap here because the pace car only just now drove thrust out as Josh Poulain uh, was already past uh, pit exit once the caution came out, so that's why we had to wait that pit lap right here. With this caution coming out, race control trying to clarify several times over to make sure everyone understands what the procedure is or what they need to be doing here again. Our safety car we've seen in this campaign and keep in mind when we do restart it's earth control single file under control of the first car on the pacing line from the point after the safety car has reached the pit lane they do not utilize the restart zone so to speak for this respective race that some of the racetracks that have nascar sanctioning have utilized so this is going to be a challenge for some, you'd have to think, but also is a huge break for others to close the big pack. That small, from the small packs back to the main pack. Yeah, it's, it's, it just throws so much out the window, but it's good for the second pack. And, and also it's very good for Chase Dilworth, second place in the division, because uh, and now he's going to be right there with Gregory Hovison of the 268. And we might see a great battle developing there for the Division 2 lead. And tell you one thing, two different penalties picked up by Marco Silva, the triple three, who is already on the race. They have triggered a potential suspension because of the amount of penalty points 13 so far. Once you reach 12 on the season, you'll be having a suspension. The next race resetting to six for the rule book. So some drivers already reaching the penalty box range of the season because of their troubles. Yeah, that's never something you want to reach. 13 points in uh, basically three races. That's quite the amount as well to receive. So question now comes. We're getting through the Lamar chicane as it is now called. Um, who is going to drive into pit lane here? I don't think anybody of our top drivers is really going to take it. I don't know if they'll allow them to the pit lane, per se. Because remember, there is in this series a pit window of 1 hour and 5 minutes remaining to 45 minutes. Yeah, that, that's your mandatory pit stop, but you still would be able technically to drive into pit lane. So, like for the guys in behind, it might be a good idea. To, to go into pit lane. So again, how it works in the caution flag period, the leader is brought down to the slope speed. Every car in the racing line, one of the class receives a wave around. There's no cases in that situation. This is per full Ivor rules. Once every car is a wave around, it's caught up. Once the pit lane opens in that scenario, then they sort things again. Here's the thing, in a lot of the competitions we've seen for Ivra, some of them are basically virtual safety car periods. This one is just the standard iRacing safety car period in this situation for the Race Control Command. And already the lights are up on the top of the iRacing safety car, in fact, for this restart next time on. on 
depends on how you handle this. Yeah, and, and I think nobody actually went to the pit lane, so that's why we're also not going to get an extension of the yellow flag. And actually, under Ikovich was in pit lane, so that we literally had one taker, if I see this correctly. Yeah, Ikovich, the only driver to go into pit lane, uh, thinking he took full service. Obviously, this does mean that he's now clear to go to the end with that pit stop. Still, the um, pit window still has an open, and he still needs to do that one mandatory pit stop. It's tuning in so far. Grand total now of the ten drivers out of the race to which him the most recent of them. Three are on the lead lap. I will say this helps uh, Rajkovic. Remember, after he flew into the infield, was about dead last on the track on the lead lap. Going to be right back in the pack. The downside is he just got the train. Yeah, but you know, it, it's it's a opportunity once again for Rajkovic. He was so far. I think it was like nearly half a lap behind everybody else. Uh, when the safety car came out so good for him and I think that's also the reason why he did take uh, at least new tires because now he can fully attack he has a tire advantage on everybody else and you know driving through the field that is most definitely gonna be a big big plus on the uh, driver there because he most definitely does have the speed as they where did they start let's have a see And it's Team Fordzilla, Team Fordzilla in Hoytzenville up at the front. Make performance SRT in fourth. Round of the top five, all division one is OTK by Butt Kicker. DTR Esports in sixth, division two. You know, Delta Sport back to seventh now. German Sim Ring scenes 127. Universal Rand, Strata Nomad, division two, Maniti, the top 11. The interesting thing when it comes to that car we refer to with the Team Winchfield 248, 33rd just on the attrition of the low. Stick early. Team Fordzilla car starting to get ready to rev the engines. Restart scenario. Mid hour, 21 minutes to go on the clock. Green flag is out, back underway. And already one car stepping out. That's the lap car of. WS Racing Esports, the top three breakaway again. Nick Madsen not going to let that happen. Too wide behind him as the traffic makes it offset three. And yeah, this is a little bit annoying for our fourth place driver because immediately a gap opened up just because um, that lap car was still stuck in between that. I thought it got away from, but apparently it didn't get away from, from race control, so that's why they were stuck in between our lead, lap, lead cars. Justin with the jinx there, <laughs> immediately a car loses control, and there's another one! That's not a good spot to get stuck at, that is Swank Racing! Swank Racing may be trying to get a tow, the 271 was the car who spun around. Stay green for now. Yeah, Drew Swank of Swank Racing that was. Innocent bystander in that SI. I think I've seen. So yeah, unfortunate for these guys. Can't do anything about that. Get collected by a car out of control. Ah, that must be frustrating as we see Ethan Bass of the Orbit Motorsport Venus. 22nd right now. Uh, 20, 20th right now. Uh, in our Soul Ford GT3. Ethan Bass driving the only Ford in the field. Downside for the Ford. 
lightning quickly reeled in by Eclipse Racing Team. Fast qualified in the 30s. Right now it's trying hard as it might to hold on to the BMWs. It's blinking its lights saying thank you for showing me. By the way, a car we have talked about earlier briefly, the RD Zip Sport car of Alistair Kirk, the 258, already up to 14th place from 46. So incredible how they continue on their journey and they're not too far away anymore off the top 10. Yeah, RD Zip Sport doing a very solid job today, absolutely. Now things have played out with the tar charge of the pack, 32 spots. A couple of penalties awarded, 244, 60 seconds down the hole, 124, picking up a drive through penalty. That was after the big one in the trioval. Here's a look at Marcus Fox. How at Sim Racing now second in the division? Division 3 for Strata Nomad. The stand no man, I should say. Ryan Scott Hamilton leads the division just up the track. Yeah, Element Sim Racing, they're doing a good job. First and second, uh, sorry, uh, second place right behind first. Uh, third place, by the way, is seven seconds already back on these two leading the Division 3 field, and I think even they have a slow down penalty as they are very slow to the middle. Oh, Hardy Simsport wants the class lead. They have a good chance trying to reel back in JDR Esports, looking around around the last of Division 3 cards in the grouping. Belt Esports also making some lunges on some of these Division 3 drivers. Intensity most definitely has uh, increased from what we have seen from uh, the first green flag period, uh, which is nice to see. We also have uh, now a big, big group inside the field, all the way down from 19th place to should be somewhere in the 30s. Uh, so very good to see that these guys now have stepped up a little bit. The aggression are a little bit, yeah, better racing wise. Uh, have turned up their engines and are ready to drop. One of the Delta V cars, Roger Pochett's just been given a 20 second stop and hold. That was a bombing big one as well down the front stretch. All on board meanwhile, with them and Sim Racing trying to battle it out for Division 3's lead. There are three cars in the division in this choo-choo train as well. Marcus Fox doing a solid job, I will say, today in his own Sim Racing water car. He almost definitely um, started in 10th place, so lost four positions. Uh, while the Pestrana car is has gained, what is that, 17 positions themselves. But it's not about how much you gain, but where you're placed in, in, in your class. Because we do pay class points, not over points. And that still means Element Sim Racing is continuing their trend uh, of just, you know, staying consistent if we take out Imola. They, they were third place in, in Nürburgring, so once again a second place in Daytona if they can keep it up for the next 1 hour and 15 minutes. That is going to be a nice points paying position yet again. Put them back in the mid pack, absolutely for the vision. After all, that zero point round last time has them dead last in the standings out of 11 teams. Pretty hardy checkup still. Your Kirk up in front still trying to find a way to get back to the line Scott Hamilton. It seems Scott Hamilton is pretty good in this game view. He'll break away, but the draft is what's keeping it close. Yeah, most definitely, Ryan Scott Hamilton is very, very good through there, but it is also the, uh, the Mercedes, rather. Uh, it is very good. A little bit of clutch in there to save a maximum amount of fuel from the 372. Uh, but, as I said, the draft is just so strong in GT3 cars that uh, they are going to catch right back up. And so Hamilton just plays the game of, I'm faster than you in the 
uh, in the infield, but you guys are just able to sneakily come back up. And there we go. Actually, the overtaking position is going to happen now. Audi Sim Sport now into 12th place. That's overall in the field. That opens up the door for the Division 3 lead. Marcus Fox can't get around. Go back to single file. Element Sim Racing Fire, meanwhile, has just been awarded a penalty. So one of the Element Sim Racing cars not having the greatest of days now. Oh. Trouble! Oh, and it's oh, right in front goodness. of the pack! That is Ingersoll Rand's GT3 Sprint 2 car. Now having the fun of bad luck. And that was also Jason Dilworth, if I saw that correctly. 256, who was second place in Division 2. Uh, now all the way back to what seems to be position number 19. So very bad luck for these guys. Almost seemed like there was a bit of a checkup effect there. Just one car, it seemed like losing the rear end a little bit through the corner. And that checked everybody up in behind. Nothing that they could do. Just a simple chain reaction that uh, nobody was able to escape there. That kind of sent that pack we were watching a bit scattering. I was, son, I was so Santosi though. What a good charge for the pack. The Italian already up inside the top 14 of overall. Making up for a horrific wall fight. Yeah, it, it just shows that with patience you can go place. I mean, Ari Simsport, for example, right there. You see the corner now, looking inside the top 10 uh, because of those two guys spinning out, actually now inside the top 10. So they have gained 36 positions themselves. So. They turn it, it is a place where you can pass, but you just have to be patient. You have to take your opportunities, and that's what RD Simsport did do. Alessio well, can it's only now going for the pass here on the first horseshoe for that position and does it nicely. So, so ninth to win the division, they just need to pass by a couple more cars to then try and get to Miniti Racing, who's on the lonesome. Have a shot at the next spot in the division. Yeah, uh, every car in front of him until the Maniti is actually a different class. So all he can do is just, you know, be patient, take his time with those overtakes because it's not going to gain him anything um, if he tries to make a maybe aggressive move into one of the breaking zones. Just not worth it whatsoever. Six minutes away from the pit window. That's going to be the busy time. And that's going to be interesting how the caution plays out a bit because of the fuel save. How much time drivers elect, or rather how much fuel they put into the cars now. Because sometimes the lighter the car, the faster the car. Yeah, exactly. Um, and one thing I've just noticed is that Max Riedmann of Manichi Racing actually has some front bumper damage, so that might slow him down as well as these guys are fighting for that 10th uh, place. Seems like Alistair Kirk is going to prevail in this one as he has the inside 4 turn one Still no change though for the division, although the I Livery's Vibe Sports purple car tries to keep up with the division 2 counterpart. Here comes Santosi. And there goes the turn down. Ryan Scott Hamilton loses the Division 3 lead. Marcus Fox passes. A little bit of an aggressive turn there from Hamilton. Tried to do a switcheroo. Did slightly hit the Sabal car, which did unsettle his car. And thus, Marcus Fox able to just sneak by. And oh, in behind. German Sim Racing. Spin up at the heart of the pack. Dennis Brzezik, who, remember, qualified 41st. As his recovery drive, go backwards. He'll go all the way back to the 30s because of that spin in the West Shore Shoe. Yeah, back to 31st, actually, as he now gets overtaken as well by those cars. Just oh. very unfortunate. Well, and Ted Lomantic nearly turns him for good measure. 
but all the way back to 30th, absolutely. Just seems to be not his day. That car fifth in the points entering today. Yeah, if we want to talk about the team that's not their day whatsoever, we have to uh, talk about our points leader in Division 2, German Sim Racing at 246. Two times second place, and they have uh, finished their race just four laps into the event today. Take a look. Yeah, just Air versus life in too fast uh, touches the rear uh, of the car ahead and spins themselves around because of that contact, because of how it unsettled the car. Just highly uh, unfortunate there. Nothing that they could have done to correct that as that spin just was way too fast. Take a look at Lou Bob. 242. Remember, started top 10 in this race overall, but I have to serve the drive through right from the get go. Top recovery, though, from her. Want to battle it up with the fellow Division 2 driver in that Ford. I always find that Ford so intriguing what it does, you know? It's one of the oldest cars on the service. And Ethan Bass said, you know what? I'm going to try and bring this Ford to glory. Well, he's trying, all right. Um, but I don't think that 19th place right now is really that glorious. But, you know, it's still it's a second division car. They are, what are they, fifth or sixth in class, I think. So he's doing a good job, Ethan Bass and Orbit Motorsport, to, uh, yeah, show that the Ford still got skills. There has been a change for a second, by the way. Philip Clater has broken up the Ford Silva cars. How big is that now? That pool has been shuffled to third. Well, uh, we didn't see it uh, on the broadcast, so uh, I, I wonder what happened there between Burns and Pauline. Maybe Pauline. Uh, pulled over to let Burns pass, and doing so, um, he himself accidentally also did let Klinger pass because Klinger just utilized that opportunity. Uh, we'll have to see. Oh, there, we actually get the replay. And sure enough, it does seem like that a team switch uh, went a little bit wrong. And that's going to be pretty big now because with Team Fordzilla 1 2. They were pulling away a couple tenths per lap. Now, can they do that now? No, I mean, Philip Coiner, one is bump drafting coming out of the quarters. You do not do that in a stock car, let alone that. But two, you have the other two drivers behind them starting to follow their same strategy to be able to do what they need to do to hold on to the draft. Yeah, uh, you know, Philip Klinger still is doing a very good job. Um, he is second place now, as you said, and uh, he's still saving a lot of fuel. He's not overtaking. He's backing off right now. Yes, he's doing the bump draft. And oh, look at that. Ford Zilla trying to make it 1 2 again. No drafting help, though. Pullen. Oh, and Tim Hunchville just lets him have it. Phil Quinter, that bump draft gave him front end damage. Oh, he did as well. What did we say about the new damage model with bump drafting? The 148 now going to pay the price. A huge din on the front end of their Porsche. Is this going to be the break Osper Copper and Sean Campbell need? The pit window is now open. Yeah, Klinger, oh my goodness, how how unfortunate that is. Is it going to affect him? How much is it going to affect him? Actually, let's, let's have a look at uh, Maniti. How are they doing with their damage? Um, looking at the laptops, they are doing it still, you know, what they were doing before that damage that they received. So it seems like um, it's not really affecting the car. Uh, if you have that front-end damage from bump drafting. So, good call 
hopefully for Philip Klinger and Team Hoysenveld. Team Hoysenveld cars. There's the, another one. Already battling for 27 officially in two car. Continuing its slow recovery from a slide to the infield. Andre, remember, fell streamer on the iRacing service. Nick McLaughlin's Division 3 car, despite the damage, it wants to go because P1 Esport is up the road. See, that compromise is the 248. Here comes Dennis Brzezik again. Yeah, and that's one of those things. Under Rykovic tried to battle into the launch chicane, and that's why he lost out there. As there's, oh, was there a spin? That's a lot of smoke. Now, curious on the smoke. Don't did see a car around that vicinity. Olympus is slow. Oh, and near contact to the braking zone. One of the Olympus cars losing tons of ground. Maybe that was it. Oh yeah, that BMW has some damage. Uh, that must have been our victim. Uh, it's some sort of incident down into the dog leg. Can confirm that was the car who brought the smoke up. The 321. Oh, and something's going on with Rusty Spatulas. Rusty Spatulas is off the track, just off the circuit of what they just passed by. This is Rusty Spatulas' problem. This is five seconds ago. Yeah, just too fast into the second horseshoe. Spins it around on the grass. But uh, thankfully, it seems like not too much time lost as uh, nah, just the grass so slippery here off camp as well. Has to wait a long time to spot to recharge in a awkward angle as well. So actually, that is, I correct myself, a lot of time lost for the Rusty Spatulas. It were second in the division. Not anymore. Battle for second, Division 2. Possibly could heat up. RD Simsport trying to make a break for it, though. Division 3 leader Marcus Fox trying to help out I liveries. Seems like that RD Simsport car is absolutely hooked up today, though. Yeah, most definitely, Darren. They're doing such good job here, lap after lap. Alistair Kirk, incredible how they're able to just easily glide through the field in such a short amount of time as we're closing in, by the way, I've just realized, onto the one hour mark of this race already. Well, there's the chance to make a pass. Kirk had a bad corner exit from Marcetti. Line it back up, trying to switch back though. Coming off the corner, nearly gets into the side end of the 258. Money in a better spot here on the lower side of the banking, shorter distance. Marcus Fox though elects to help out Kirk instead. Ryan Scott Hamilton also boxed in the midst of this in the battle for the Division 3 lead. Yeah, but um, at the same time, you know, Sandro Massini, uh, Ma Massani, sorry, showing uh, what a bad overtake can do to to the the gap to the current front. He overtook Audi Simsport inside the infield. They did battle for about one and a half corners, and just look at how much they have lost to the Sabin car up ahead. They, that is incredible. Uh, they lost. One and a half seconds just that past lap because of that overtake. Might have a chance of an overtake again, though. A bit of an overdrive. Or Sonny. Gonna hold on to it, though, for the position. And RD Simsport, an organization started about 14 months ago, keep in mind. Plenty of endurance racing experience. And. In the respective competitors, they at one time allowed one of their drivers to run in the Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada, Blake Townend, this year. He's 
we had all near all British outfit, so to speak, in terms of the regional spread. Yeah, which is spread. Good. Go ahead. Uh, which which is good that you have that that one compact driver uh, set up that everybody is you know from the same region or, or at least speaking the same language. Uh, it, it can help massively. It can improve morale as well because you you understand each other's jokes and, and stuff like that uh, because you're you're from the same culture. So team spirit most definitely is high. And you know the drivers are liking the racing because we can see Alistair Kirk uh, most definitely enjoying so far every single minute that he has been inside the BMW. Ryan Scott Hamilton, though, has struggled, it seems, coming out of the bus stop. The draft seems to be the one thing keeping them tight. See how close they're able to get here. Yeah, uh, last lap, Ryan Scott Hamilton, four tenths faster than uh, Masani. Uh, he was also the fastest of the pack, and at the same time, Katsona up ahead of Sabal Esport, slowly moving away. Last lap, it's a tenth that Marsan lost in the uh, Libre's car. But uh, this time around, Al Alessio with a bit of a mishap in turn one, and they have closed up a little bit. And Max Riedmüller in a Manetti car continues to fall back into the clutches of that pack that we are right now riding on board inside as Ryan Scott Hamilton tries to do the overtake. Side by side, Division 3, class lead. Ryan Scott Hamilton going the shorter distance. Sim Racing checked up on that last corner. And a Nomad once again up to the class lead. Back and forth they go for Division 3. I'm honestly a little bit surprised it didn't lose them more time than it actually did. So Ryan Scott Hamilton, good overtake right there um, on uh, Marcus Fox. As it, it is starting to spread out a little bit, this pack, as you can see here on a bit of a wider shot. They are nearly equal distance apart now, every single car from each other except for Hamilton and Fox. Don't have backing down, but again, it's been difficult to outrun and a nomad, it seems, when they seem to have a good setup. They can pull away, we've seen that in Germany. Bunny has nearly pulled away, by the way. They have closed up the gap to Sintosi. Also, they've closed up the gap to Maniti Racing with that damage you referred to. Maniti had a three second buffer at one point to some of these cars. Yeah, it, it's not like they have slowed down massively uh, because of the damage, but it just seems like that uh, the trough just is strong enough that they are um, yeah, being pulled in uh, that much. I mean, it's also Alessio Cantone now. Uh, Cantone in behind them, so he's also a fast driver putting in a 44.6 just by himself. Um, and so if you're running 45 high to 44 low yourself, uh, that is just not gonna, not gonna cut it because as long as the Sabel car wasn't ahead in the group behind uh, They weren't being caught quite honestly by 10th place uh, just since the point that Alessio can turn Alessio of Sabel Esports uh, was in charge of that group behind they have started to reel him in and Yeah, everybody in behind is still in draft distance and so they are continuing to close in now on Max Riedmüller Expecting some of these drivers to pit within the next couple laps. Let's be 32 to go. We're about halfway through the race in terms of total laps turned. And the interesting, because of this tire bottle. Oh, Sabo, then Manitia up aside. Sorry, uh, uh, Justin. But Max Eatmuller has finally been caught now by the pack in behind, and they were side by side through one, two, three. And they were for a second at the head of this group. The back single file, though. 
was about to know some of the drivers for one just pit this time. You see some of them in the lane. Well Racing, Bowers Motorsports amongst them. JGR Esports is Spencer Ritzma. Olympus Esports bringing in Earth Division 3 car as well. But the other point was about to mention the tire fall off today for a lot of these teams. Some of the top teams upwards of one second. So that tire model really impacting this late run speed for some it seems. RD Simsport we've also seen struggle all of a sudden. Yeah, it most definitely seems like some uh, teams or drivers are going a little bit harder on their tires than others. And I had to back it up on my own cameras uh, because I felt like somebody missed their pitch a little bit. And yes, indeed, JTR Esports, Spencer Reitzma, he missed the pit stall a little bit, had to back it up. So that was another one second to one and a half seconds that they lost on that pit stop. The overall race leaders coming in around the front straightaway, not pitting, should say. They did a reach traffic that broke them up. Reutenfeld the shuffled around. They tried to take advantage, couldn't. But now, because of the lap car, Nick Madsen is in drafting range. Yeah, very much so. Oscar T. Cooper right behind as well. So let's see how all of this goes. Oh, and that's RD Simsport into pit lane. So more pit stops underway for some of those in the teams. Santa Nomad also bringing in some of the entries. Ingersoll ran. The Ford is in. We are reaching towards the very tippy top of the fuel tanks, it seems. And our penalty as well just handed out to the 310 car. Meg Ford's Jr. White, throwing in the pit lane though, a drive through penalty to serve as well now. And small update on the fight for ninth, Alessio Kentonte uh, has been able to pass the Maniti car of Max Wittmüller, so we have a change for ninth place. And one thing that I've also realized, eighth place to ninth place, 11 seconds the gap is uh, between those two. Eighth place still only four seconds behind, while ninth place already 15 seconds behind your overall leader. See if they duck in this time or try to stretch in an additional lap. Oh, there's the peel. There's the stop. Practice makes perfect. Oh, and a quick cut. Ryan Vollmer is one of some of the lap traffic in the midst of that. Now one of the first pit boxes for them that's always a little bit annoying if you're in that situation because you basically have to break earlier than everybody else just to get to your pit stall uh, because of how early it is. Yeah, but overran part of his pit stall there. Oh, and who is that in background? Black and yellow BMW. Oh, don't tell me that's about. Pit stall. That is, that's a Tozi who missed his stall. So their recovery will lose a few seconds. Pit stop times again have to be one minute. Oh, and you know what? If I'm seeing this correctly, they might be in a little bit of problem here as well because they have crossed the start finish line and I'm, I'm not sure if that might not even give them still a cut lap penalty. Would that give them the cut penalty? There goes the Ford Silver. They did not go a minute. Oh no. They did not go one minute. So this could change everything. This this could be very huge if you're correct, because Philip Klinger now uh, is making his way through three and four of the Daytona Oval. So maybe Team Heusemann, the 148, now going to drop into pit lane. And if I'm saying this correctly, yes, he is. So Philip Klinger from the lead into pit lane. also in. And now that puts a lot of attention on some of these drivers. Nick Madsen amongst those. Team there. Ethan Bass, black flag, drive through penalty. So the four will have to serve a penalty. Yeah, they did not to comply with the five second rule in pit lane. 
Now, for those who wonder what that is, they have five seconds to blend up to the right side of the track for the pit lane. They can't stay on the left side. They have to stay along the edge of the pit lane like in real world. Yeah, they have to stay into the in the fast lane going into the pit stall and out of the pit stall. So that is a huge error. Actually, two other drivers got that as well, if I'm saying it correctly. The 310. Uh, also got that penalty in on two separate occasions. Jason Dilworth, keep an eye on him. Sixth in the class. And something's happened in front of them for Valris. 237. Same section. Yeah, unsettled on the bumps and oh my goodness, what a hit onto the barrier. That BMW, now a sad, sad BMW on the front. So for now, Ford Zillicar second. Here's the thing, the 248 is the leader, but... How is this going to play out? Andre Rychkovic is currently your overall leader. The thing is, Rychkovic is only on lap 20, so they might have to come this time. Yeah, they still have to drive into pit lane. Also, uh, don't forget, Rykovic was the only car to drive into pit lane on the safety car so he probably did take fuel so he can't run longer uh, and probably will run to the end of the pit window uh, with that Porsche so the 248 has come in so for now team Ford's 012 What a drive, though, for this car. This is Marcus Fox. Vision 3 leaders. The pit stop gained them about three seconds. Once again, the Ford amongst those who just had the penalty actually just clear. So good news, if you're a fan of Fords, it does not have to come down now. Pit window basically closed. Everyone has completed service, but there's still a minute to go until the end of said window per se. And confusion on how this could play out because Team Fordzilla has a 14 second advantage on the racetrack. They did not hit the one minute pit stop time in the box. Again, not only checked in the sim in terms of the timing but also via replay timing. Yeah, this is probably going to be a huge huge penalty for those guys. 13 seconds they gain. Um, yeah, Tom Burns did argue that he, he wasn't able to see the pit stop time, but I don't think that's going to matter too much right there. And race control still will have to review that potentially in this situation. And we'll update once that comes into play. As now at this point, they're just swamp rafting to be able to help each other with fuel loads. After all, Tom Burns saved a fair bit of fuel prior to that pit stop, it appears, with his timing. Bill Coiner is in third right now overall. Let's take a look, though, at the Ford. This Ford wants spots. It's gained one spot from the pit stops, has a chance at two spots. Love 46 up the road. Looking to have its best run of the year. But Ford is having a good run right now on that Porsche. Not 
not able to make the run work though. GSC Racing by ECI, we're trying to recover from an incident several laps down, coming through as well. Yeah, Ethan Bass, a smart racer and decides better off that move. I'm not sure how the braking capabilities are of the Ford versus the Porsche, but I'm pretty sure that he would not be the better one on the brakes. So decides it's not a good opportunity right there. And rather wait another lap. A 46, of course, from Kazakhstan. He did in Russia's Formula Masters Championship back in 2014. Eventually competed in Formula 4 Southeast Asia Championship action for eight races. Picked up a pole once. Recently returned to Kazakhstan this year with what's going on in the real world. Time streamer on the platform for the past three plus years. Always see her in various different types of racing. She's done well in some series. Black flag starting to rain in as well, by the way, for the five second rule. Again, the 284, a second penalty of the race. And there we go. The panel, the protests are in for the 169 and 199, but they're all by race control themselves, along with a few other cars in total. Seven cars have now been reported by race control. So it's gonna be interesting how that is gonna play out. Pretty sure soon. No, the answer. Let you know. Only two Division One drivers in that issue with the pit lane. You can guess which two. Here's the big thing about how things are playing out here too, because Phil Kalinner is on his own on that track. This might fall into Copper and Sean Campbell's hands too. That division. We'll have to up. We'll give you updates once we can on that situation. These drivers have now reeled in the stand and Nomad. Interestingly, they elected to go for a driver change. You can do that, Stefan. But it's been rarely used this season. They have taken out Hamilton, who's done so well today. Yeah, it's an interesting tactic, but um, you never know uh, what is going to happen with that second driver. Uh, they're right now, if you see this correctly, 12 seconds back on the leader yeah um, so yeah we're gonna see how that is gonna uh, work for them pretty sure that with the 12 and a half second gap now that we have element sim racing might as well be in the clear uh, and they're just trying trying to conserve that second place as I think they also have quite the gap two third By the way, the racing for the Ford waving penalty just got confirmation and clarification in from one of our fellow co announcers, Jack Stiles. They were side by side on the entry rather than on the merging. So that's why that hadn't originally been waived, that situation. But in regards to this make performance charge, able to go forward on this track, it seems make performance really well with our cars. Going back and forth between himself and Nick Madsen on their driver swaps today. Who knew Massimo Locatelli will be the last one standing on the GSR cars up towards the front? Yeah, sometimes the races develop in an interesting way, and Locatelli though uh, has done the best of of what he got 13th to 6th a very good job he's still fighting with uh, seventh place Davide Lanzani um, sadly Sean Lee Campbell just a little bit too far away from Locatella right now so seems like unless something happens up ahead uh, oh. that is as far as they will go and the penalties are in the two top drivers in division one all day have been black flagged drive through penalty for both the Fordzilla cars. 
three drivers from Division 2, a couple from Division 1 also will have to serve. But the big news, the Fortzilla cars who have been dominant all day have to come in because they did not sit in the pit box for a minute. I wonder how much uh, they were too short on their pit stall time. Drive through penalty seems like a little bit of a small penalty, but maybe it was just a small amount of time that they weren't uh, stationary long enough. So, yeah, only race control knows that. I don't have the timings. And uh, most definitely, that will be a good enough of a penalty for our third place driver to take over the lead, Philip Klinger of Team Heusenveld, most definitely loving this right now. 29 seconds is the Delta. And tempers flaring for the Fordzilla cars. This puts them all the way back to about the edge of the top five. Once they serve this penalty, they have three laps to serve it. So it now, is. Team Weichenfeld is in the overall lead once they serve this. And the big thing about that 148, they have been reeled in by Oster Culper and Sean Campbell. So Ford still is out of contention for a two-car fight for the win, possibly. Insert three others instead. Yeah, uh... While this is bad news for Klinger, it's also good news for Klinger because now he has uh, two other cars and they're most definitely going to pick up the pace. Uh, Team Fortzilla, they're not going to be able to uh, drive out that gap of 29 seconds that they're going to lose traversing the pit lane. So, going to be uh, yeah, interesting how they're going to bounce back from that because they will probably be out of the win contention here. Both cars just because of a simple error of not being stationary long enough and I just had a quick look into the rule book there are actually a different amount of penalties for how much he undershot the one minute mark so must have been not a lot of time that they missed the mark by uh, on that pit stop an unbelievable change of circumstances here today Team Fordzilla having their best round as a group this season so far in the series. That was completely eviscerated. It's a little pit road mistake. There they go to serve the drive through. Oh, and they might have a speeding penalty added on to it. Yes, both of them nearly, if not may have sped. So we'll see if that is an in-sim penalty added. Yeah, Josh Pullane at least. Oh, and are they parked? Yeah, there we go, there we go. Josh Pullane was 40 kph too fast on the the pit entry. Goes immediately for the pit as well. And he's changing tires on top. Oh my goodness, forgot to deselect the tire change. This is huge. He's not going to be happy in that race car right now. Instead of coming out of pit lane with Tom Burns right behind the leading pack, he is still stationary in pit lane and probably fuming with himself. So he'll sit in the pit lane for a fair amount of time, to say the very least here. Tom Burns, you mentioned it there. I think it's important we head towards the 169. We can because Poulin basically is out of this. I don't even know if he's going to be willing to leave the car at this point or be in the car. But Tom Burns, with the drive-through, still has a shot. Somehow. Yeah, he's right there. In fact, he's closing in on the draft with Campbell. Under 35 minutes to go, they have a shot still. Yeah, very much do so, but the question is, having to fight against three on the Porsche, how are they going to react to that? Because all of a sudden they have four cars who can win this. Two of them didn't even know they are going to have a shot. 34 minutes to go, 34 and a half minutes to go. 
This is setting up to be a crack. Team Hoichenfeld now in the lead. Then it's OTK by butt kicker. Delta Sport, Team Fordzilla. Oh, one, two, three, four. Tom Burns with a massive break there as a result of the drive through penalty. And I can confirm Josh Pullin out of the car. Don't think we're going to see a second Fordzilla car re enter this race anymore. So four different teams have a chance to be able to bring their cars home to victory now in the division. Nick McLaughlin, meanwhile, is Division 3 car from 48 to 26 now. Pushing ahead with the Mio Winbo to try and get up to the other Division 3 cars who are side by side ahead of them. can be if you kept an eye Stevon, on PRL competition. Yeah, he can be very fast if he wants to. Uh, Nick McLaughlin doing a very good job here today as well. Uh, just yeah, incredible how uh, he always can put out such a yeah, stellar performance, I have to say, uh, race after race. just how much this pack ape team closed up those two as a result of some of the teamwork to get up to there rusty spatula is trying to get around jtr esports for reference hence why some of the holdups are there 27 cars left on the lead lap for reference so far in this race team fordzilla plus those one lap down the pool and who did not come back out omen um, some race battle first of those take a look at the run up towards the international horseshoe May performance SRT doing well today. Massimo Locatello pushing forward. This is fifth and sixth. Four seconds behind the overall leaders. Yeah, and Philip Klinger has slightly uh, crept up the pace now. 44.957 last lap around. So he's about a tenth faster than this chasing group of Lanzani and Massimo Locatello. Okay. Esports here too. Compare to what we've seen for some of the art packs, they are in the midst of a hornet's nest. Jason Dilworp saying hi to the back bumper for a moment, it seemed. RD Simsport also in the train. Ingersoll ran GT Sprint 2 also has recovered to get back in this pack. This is 9th through 14th overall. Includes and also includes second in Division 2, as well as your Division 3 leader. our division three leader elements of racing as we can see on our tower as well they still have about 13 and a half seconds of a gap to second place so the good thing is they're in no pressure whatsoever still are going to take over the lead of the pack oh in trouble that's rd sims ford off the racetrack that was uh, still no. Just able to get across the track in time to avoid trouble, so that pack shrinks to just four. I wonder what happened with RD Sim Sport. That's an unusual way to spin. Just got checked up a little bit too fast. The car ahead into the Le Mans chicane and around they went. The working while pushing its body sports machine. They stay about stationary in the positions they were entering the lap. And is still trying to defend a little bit to some of the Division 3 cars, but it almost seems like they're trying to use each other's various divisions as a buffer to be able to hold on to their spot or set points. Would you do that if you were in that spot, Stefan? hard to tell you know it, it depends on how you're feeling as a, as a driver it, it depends on how you're feeling in this pack you know you might be the fast one but just the pack is too erratic and you just have to stay back because you don't want to get involved and at the same time you know you have the 
the leaders of Division 2 fighting in this pack, so you really have to be careful about what you want to do. You have to be careful, but also make sure you don't go too early, right? Because there's still 29 minutes to go on the clock. Yeah, exactly, that's the next thing. There are just so many things that you have to calculate um, that to be honest, I wouldn't want to calculate right now. These guys are all very happy, quite honestly, of where they're sitting. So I might as well just stay put and, and continue to cruise into the finish like that. See, they're already trying to ditch the fourth car of the group, I Liveries. The tough thing is they are eight seconds back of any other spots right now. Officially on the board. Well, it's the Division 2 leader, JTR Esports, who's working with the main team. Car oh, trying to reel in. And by the way, our overall leaders had a little bit of a swap um, over the start finish line, it seems, because Oscar T. Cooper now in first place with Philip Klinger second and uh, Sean Campbell in third. So there has been a little bit of a swap of these guys in the past lap. The aggression level's picking up a little bit, time ticking away. Oh, a little aggressive on the gas there. Up the track, stand a nomad. Don't worry, nearly talking to And at the end of the racetrack. Trying to get the spot back. Campbell to the outside of Cleaner. Cooper looking to help him. Tom Burns just watching in the popcorn seat. Campbell going for the lead. Oh, and Cooper absolutely checks up Cleaner. Campbell to the race lead. Yeah, Klinger actually went off the throttle before that, so really not too much of a problem for Klinger. Uh, and here, yeah, Tom Burns still sitting there in fourth place, not wanting to have any action there, just looking of where he is stronger than the other guys, where they are stronger than him, uh, where the best passing opportunities are against those three drivers coming up in the last 26 minutes of this motor race. Yeah, but it's pretty clear Clayton knows these two in front half history working together wants to break them up. What do you think Tom Burns is doing in all of this, though? Uh, yeah, Tom, as, as I said, Tom Burns is just sitting back, relaxing a little bit here, uh, looking at where he's from, where the other system where the best, the best passing opportunities are against these guys. And, you know, even though with the, the front two guys, Cooper and Campbell, have a history of being teammates, uh, that is long gone um, in this motor race, and so they might be friends when they're off the track, but right now all that counts is they are driving for their team and they want that win for a barrel of outfit right here, right now. But to say, when it comes down to save five to go, thumbs might be off, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's off already. Well, some of it's fair now, yeah. Tom Burns trying to keep the pack together. Bump draft, and there goes Cooper to the inside. Campbell backs it up. Campbell with the swap. Cooper now to the class lead. A very efficient way to do that, too. Not allowing Hoytebel to break up the pack. They have lap traffic now ahead. WS Racing Esports, a 201 car. how close they're getting in terms of the breaking point marks. Team Hoytjebelt seems to be struggling a little bit in this infield, the second part of the horseshoes. Yeah, but they're also getting held up a little bit by the car in front, so uh, it might, might be that Klinger isn't that strong, but it might also be that Campbell hasn't set up the car too much for the infield, as they're also not going to run up to Benjamin Opankowski. Uh, that is a lap car up ahead. 
10, 15 car lanes up the road, yes. Mitchell and drivers, a five second buffer for the rest of the field. Coming up to 14 estimated laps to go this upcoming time by. 24 minutes now by the clock. Lap traffic moves out of the way quickly. But Campbell not wanting to swap this time. Will Klinger want to try and swap? No, he backs it up. Burns takes a chance. Burns licks the stamp, sends it for third. A little bit squirmy there on the brakes for Burns, the 169, but gets it slowed down enough, gets it under control, and most importantly, takes away that third place from Klinger. But what is now going to happen? He still has two cars to go, and I'm very sure that at this time in point, point in time rather, uh, Tom Burns does not have the speed to get away from this pack. Uh, 23 minutes remaining. That Ford Silver car, though, still has a chance to win, and that is the most important thing. That's the huge thing. For those curious on the reason for the 356 driver swap, essentially the rule is higher class. Group 3, you must be able to make the driver swap. That's confirmation from Ryan Hamilton. They are starting to ditch the Team Hoysenville car in bunches now. Linger able to gain back some of the time breaking zone. But Tom Burns trying to line it up behind these two. Here comes Tom Burns, full head of steam. 175 miles per hour. A triple bump draft. Whoa. You do not want to do that. Campbell with the save. That was sketchy. You don't want to do that in oval racing gear. Especially don't want to do that in um, touring car racing or GT racing rather. Giving a not squared up bump to the car behind, especially drafting or bump drafting with three cars. Tom Burns does it anyway, and oh my goodness, Sean D. Campbell nearly loses the car. No damage on any of their cars. If anything, they gain time on the other pack. More than six seconds after the save, too. But it's pretty clear Tom Burns wants to go. Speaking of the other packs, well, Esports still trying to sort things out with Jason Dilworth now. Dilworth last time picked up about half a tenth compared to Spot Esports. So these cars are still squabbling a little bit in this pack. Speaking of squabbling, Cameron White trying to squabble third in Division 3. Fifth in Division 3 is Rusty Spatulas. These are all four division spots on the track. Yeah, still lots of battles all around the track, all around the field. Uh, up and down we go with a lot of positions. No real position is set in stone yet. And I think we once again have a little bit of a battle on our hand for first place overall. Aggressive battling in Division 3. No changes in spots in the last, at the other end of the in and out in the Division 1 you see on the other side. Things around a bit in the Division 3 standings, to say the very least. Precision Racing Esports, remember, won at the Nürburgring, but at zero points, picked up at Imola. Defensive line taken. Cameron White going hard inside. McLaughlin has a chance to get the run. That was a Her good exit out of Le Mans. Here goes McLaughlin a little early. We're racing four from the points, trying to hold on to the bottom. Rusty Spatulas trying to draft back up third in the standings. 
Often able to make it work on the outside of the banking to make the pass. Campbell right now with the draft. Jan Zelka is trying to run all the way from the high side to drive past both of them, able to hold on to it. Can't get the spots though. Yeah, they're all Division three drivers back to back to back. So Siliak has tried it, but all the marbles just wasn't able to hold it. And that's also one thing we have to respect here, which we haven't talked about yet. Offline now, the grip gets worse and worse with all the marbles being added. So Siliak is finding it out the hard way that braking just isn't that good anymore on the outside. After all, they have about 11 estimated laps to work with. Once want some of the final drivers in the lead lap currently. Take a look at the leaders. Cleaner, we mentioned, was struggling to keep up recently, Stefan. He's doing it again. Yeah, he's starting to lose a little bit. Uh, last lap over the line, he was nearly a second back from your leader. Uh, six tenths away from uh, Perns. So yeah, it's, it's surprising how he's just not able to keep up the speed. 25 won the last lap versus a 44 5 by Koper. So it seems like Klager has used up his stars. The main thing that seems to be holding him up in this pack, I should say, seems to be that draft. Without the draft, he might be gone. He was one, nearly a six tenths slower than your race leaders last time behind the top three. Yeah, exactly. The draft is huge right now for Klinger. He just has to keep up a good pace through the Le Mans chicane, which he does quite nicely. So he's going to continue to stay with them. And hopefully, from his point of view and from the fans point of view is going to stay with them as that our pack most definitely seems like the major contenders for the win here today in the last 17 minutes of this virtual motor race well 10 has to be laps to go tom burns is thinking of a send can't do it it takes at least a peak but Queen are also launches behind so they stay in line to stern is just notice with the estimated lap total mentioned with the times they're running it might get an extra lap here too yeah you might be right about that so hopefully everybody did calculate that in and does run out of fuel on the last lap we have seen it happen already even in the Daytona 24 already that the people miscalculated that last extra lap and because of that even lost the lead We've already seen hard fuel save from a couple of these drivers. That's definitely going to be a part of the reason why. But the thing is, it is literally on top of that number to make it 10 or 11 laps the last time by the stripe. There's Campbell with a hard fuel save. Go seven seconds the buffer running 144. The times compared to their fastest off by one second with the fall off. And the two cars you saw in the background going into the Mans chicane, those are fifth and sixth. Massimo Patello and Davide Lanzani, they're still fighting for that fifth place uh, behind this group. And you know, they have picked up the pace a little bit. Last lap was a point by Massimo Locatello. So if something happens up ahead to get the major slowdown, they will be right on them. As we have a 44-6 from Cooper once again in first place versus a 44-8 from Locatello. Party Sim Sport only on to 15. Still your biggest movers despite the issues they had moments ago. Orbit Motorsport still working hard. Apparently, Jack Styles is their crew chief and team owner. He's going to be happy to see that fourth flag to try and pass another car for Division 2.
possibly in line for his first top five. They do have traffic to deal with, though. That's going to be the tough thing. World of Sim Racing team who has struggled today up the road. Leaders up top still staying single file on how they are forming up. All on the drafting train. No moves in the past couple laps since the initial passes up top. Yeah, this might be the calm before the storm. 13 uh, minutes, 40 seconds to go. Sean Campbell continues to bump draft Oscar T. Cooper. And Tom Burns might just do the same with Sean Campbell. Oh, Campbell oh, there it is. goes for a defense. Tom Burns wants the lead. Cooper with a big bobble on the save. Oh, Burns oh. cuts off Campbell's nose. Squeezes Cooper. Turns oh, into contact. Cooper. The Delta Sport car gets the crossover. Campbell takes the class lead again. Wow. Yeah, Tom Burns might still be fired up from the penalty that he got because that was overly aggressive too much. Didn't need to do that. Could have settled for just that one car. Even that move was already highly aggressive onto the racing line. Cutting off Sean Campbell. And in the end, it throwed him back into fourth place instead of taking over the lead. Tom Burns needs to just slightly calm down here once again. 12 and a half minutes still to go in this motor race. There is still lots to gain, but even more to lose. Well, he did lose a couple spots. Cleaner is right back into the thick of things because of all that bumping and baiting. Now coming to seven estimated to go on the board. 12 minutes coming up on the clock. Already Cleaner trying to sneak out and see what the traffic situation may be. Cooper, a terrible run through Le Mans. Here comes Team Hoytzenveld. Campbell runs away side by side for second. Yeah, this is going to be good for Sean Campbell. He loves to see this right now in his review mirror. Here comes now Tom Burns to the back of Klinger. Super scrolly though, Tom Burns. Was able to really screw it up, but now the draft comes in. The bump draft on the top side as well. They're slowly closing it, but they're still side by side going into turn one. Where Sean Campbell just can't take the optimal racing line. Still side by side, just going through turn one. Well, we're able to hold on defensively, though. Hoytzenville not able to make a pass. Deeper on the brakes goes Cooper to try and close up to Campbell. Big check up and stack up for third and fourth. Burns going to have to push all his might again to try and find a way back up around the Hoytzenville car. Oh, he wants oh. it now instead of the braking zone. Up to the West Horseshoe, able to make it stick. Up to third again. Tom Burns is on fire, and I don't mean that in a good sense right now. Once again, a super aggressive move, just about able to square it up there uh, on the second horseshoe. Losing another chunk of time to the top two. What is Klinger gonna do? Side by side, meanwhile, in that battle for Division 3, McLaughlin. Fights off Rusty Spatulas this time. Burr Racing able to keep it from going off to the other side of the in and out. Two intense battles starting to pick up down to the final 10 minutes to go. Points on the line. Plenty of potential to shuffle around these championship standings. Two packs of two now for the front cars. Tom Burns trying to close up half a second with the help of Klinger. There goes the gap just like that in the braking zone down to just a couple car lengths. These drivers all separate by one second. German Sim Racing to make performance. They are about six seconds behind all this. If anything boils over, remember, they have a good shot. Yeah, 
and they have closed in ever slightly because of all the kerfuffle we have seen inside the top four. So, yeah, they, they if, as I said, if, if they continue to battle like this, they still have a shot of getting back into this pack event. Who knows what they're gonna be up to if they would be able to reach the back end of this four car uh, fighting field. Very hard pushing that time for Burns nearly up to the wall. They are working hard, hard, hard to close up around this racetrack. Looking at one of the other pa battle packs, Dilworth and Satoshi have ditched the rest of the drivers that were in that group. That's for ninth and 10th overall. The Belt Esports 21 spots gained today for the Italian. tough thing right now is there might not be enough time for Dilworth to get up to Gregory Hobson Hobson I should say for the division two lead division one leaders fight again Burns still wants to go tries to cross to the back bumper of Cooper again going through the quick S up to the international horseshoe up the inside for second Tom Burns leapfrogs his way ahead in the Ford Zilla car Third time he made that move, Tom Burns. Third time it worked out for him. Uh, yeah. Interesting, interesting to see. Philip Klinger as well just continues to struggle um, in the fourth place of this field. Um, just able to stick with them because of the draft. Maybe he's also still saving fuel and just having to save so much fuel every other lap that he is nearly losing these guys up ahead. Who knows really apart from himself. Burns hungry. Burns leading 12 of the laps today down below. More battling with one of the hunching belt cars. That's the 248 battling for position in class with John Williams Eclipse Racing Team. Jake Shirley, we haven't mentioned his name too much for TNT Esports Orange. Also joined by a Division 3 driver in Nuno Costa. And Vector Sim Racing's Division 2 car is still functioning with Luke Burdenshaw. Those drivers all lined to storm for the infield on the bottom side. Leaders for Division 1 on the top side. Under seven minutes to go. Fanning out for Division 1. Burns took a peek. Campbell hugs the bottom. Campbell slows it down on the apex, doesn't give the run to Tom Burns. Not gonna be able to do what he has. No, never mind, he goes for it. Tom Burns goes to the inside. Sean Campbell lets him have it. Tom Burns back up to the class lead. Under five estimated laps to go. Can Burns defend for another four or five laps? On board, this is Coiner. Can he do anything is the tough thing. He does not have any help to be able to push him by with the damage. All the way up the track, Burns way had to work it up on the steering wheel. Yeah, Tom Burns, big 11 onto the racetrack there. Nearly lost it twice going back onto the oval. And that was quite some skillful driving by the 169. Here's Cooper. Up through the final chicanes, through the bus stop. Decent run to the bus stop. Burns had the best out of them all, though. Campbell has the trap. Cooper has the double toe. Triple toe for cleaner. There goes Sean Campbell outside. No help to get by. Cooper lifts. Let's Campbell back in the line. Cleaner nearly loses touch to them. Under five minutes to go in the clock. How do you set this up, Stefan, is the huge thing. We just seen, as soon as he stepped out, Campbell did, it was like a brick wall. 
Yeah, that, that is the big problem of GT3 racing right now, that it is just that big, big wall. The draft is so, so good as soon as you step out, uh, you're hitting that brick wall of wind and you're pretty much right away back to your normal speed. So you have to be careful, you have to choose when you go out onto a draft, or maybe it also was just Sean Kemp. Uh, lifting off the throttle there because it did seem a little bit too much even for GT3 uh, ways of hitting that wall so yeah maybe just tactics playing out Sean Campbell looking at how much he still can be back to steal that victory over the start finish line so plans already starting to be drawn up for the last lap Rob helping him close back up to under two tenths Burns has been really strong on the infield today as this blows this run out of the bus stop. Great exit, Tom Burns. More momentum going through NASCAR 3 and 4. Couple estimated laps to go this time by. About three minutes up on the board. Oh, and Campbell's got a good run. Here comes Cooper as well for help. Campbell elects to stay behind. Looking like he might be waiting for that final lap. Here comes Klinner though for third. Klinner tries the outside, squeezes it, sends it, doesn't work. Campbell and Cooper losing tons of ground though in the midst of the sin field. They need to be about two tenths closer by the time they exit the bus stop. Oh, this is a bad infield for Sean Campbell. Lost a lot of time in the last two corners. And look how that gap has opened up ahead of the car. Uh, yeah, seven tenths. Yeah, seven tenths now the gap is. This will be hard to close up, uh, probably, uh, if he gets a little bit of average bust up already. So let's see. This is going to be important for the 170. Campbell trying to send it hard on the bus stop. Trying to maintain momentum. A great run to the bus stop for both of them. Yeah, that was really huge. One and a half tenths gained there for... Sean Campbell, so he is going to be on the back once again after 169. What is Cooper going to do? Probably going to do the bump drop. Going to do the sensible thing? Yes, he does. Squares it up very nicely on the 170. And oh, they're going to go for the overtake, Justin. White flag waving. Here comes Sean Campbell from the outside with the help of Cooper on the bump. He slams the door and burns his face. Oh. Burns hits the back oh. end. Checks everyone up. Cooper backs out of it. Burns. Falls half a second back. Here comes Klinger. Klinger trying to take away third does. Couple more chances to make the move. Three quarters of a lap to go. Oh, and Klinger again see. trying to fight. Cooper holds on to it, keeps it off the grass. Burns has closed all the ground up. His infield section has been his strong point all day. Two tenths between the top two. Yeah, Reaching what is Klinger going to do? What is Klinger going to do? Third place, he's in the perfect spot if he can get a good run through the bus stop. Huge defensive line. One car running out of gas on the apron. One of the Olympus cars. Side by side into the bus stop. Oh my goodness. Burns backs out of it. Planer checked up hard. Does Burns have enough to close up to Campbell for the strike? Final time through NASCAR 4. Campbell looking to hold on. Burns looking to rip it away. Here comes Tom Burns. It's not going to be enough. Sean Campbell wins at Daytona. Wow. 
What a fight we were able to witness. And even fifth place seemed to be have very close there. Division two going the way of JTR Esports. Gregory Hobson dominates the class eight seconds up over this madhouse. Several more cards with troubles. Jason Dilworth, 10th overall, second in Division two. Never more to the cards looking to close it out strong. Precision already Omit Sim Racing Water has taken the Division 3 win. Don Williams looking to build it up one more time to try and battle for some of these Division 2 spots. Not able to build up a run. They stay single file, in fact, for that group. But some of the final drivers on the lead lap. And not a great, the greatest of days for P1 Esport. Two seconds coming into today. They make up a spot. Someone's ran out of gas in their class. P1 Esport takes up a spot. Fuel was looking to be a factor. Imagine if we win one more. Yeah, that could have been very bad for pretty much everybody if they would have had another lap, but there is our victorious guy, Justin, Sean Campbell, to perfection with the second last lap overtake. Delta Sport takes it away. Delta Sport once again coming up on top. Back-to-back -to -back wins for Sean Campbell. He'll get the chance to celebrate here in the Opera GT Sprint Series, powered by Hudson Bell. An exciting race to end off Division 1. Dominating performances in Divisions 2 and 3 today. As he makes his way to the pit lane, let's look at the unofficial race results. Team Ford Silva comes away with second. Team Huntingbell in third. With OTK by Butt Kicker in fourth. The whole top five of Division 1 drivers with Meg Performance SRT in that fifth spot. German Sim Racing D by ACV in sixth. He racing the top seven. JTR Esports, the top team in Division 2 today, finished 8th overall, building off a strong qualifying run. Got Esports from 31st to 9th, run Nomad's 256 car, 2nd in the division, 10th overall. 11th spot went to I Livery's 5 Sports Purple, then behind them is Element Sim Racing Water, the Division 3 winners today. All behind them is Ingersoll Rand's for 2 car, 13th that ran as high as the top 10. Olympus Esports Proton were coming from a drive through to get to 14, 242. Ethan Bass drives to the top 5 in the Ford. Meanwhile, it's the 166 from 41st to 16th. Top 5 of the points like we dropped today. Strong Nomad's 356 car also picking up a podium in the class. Meanwhile, in the Division 2 cars, it was Christian Smith's Holding off John Williams. Jan Zilikas amongst those fighting in Division 3's fierce fighting with P1 Esport and Precision Racing Esports. Well, Racing dropping back to 23rd overall. The last car on the lead lap ended up being Emil Wimbo. It's passed by several drivers running out of gas. Amongst those out of gas, Lepis Esports Lambda, as well as Element Sim Racing Fire, all lap down. RD Simsport had to take an extra pit stop to make it on fuel. They finished two laps down. Well, the Sim Racing team couldn't recover from Pony. They also finished two down. TNT Esports Orange also with troubles on the fuel mileage. 29th, 30th went to Quasar Sim Racing Hydro from early ponies. You see racing by ACI involved in the crashes early. Finished four laps down with GTR Esports' 345. Also having problems four laps down. Thomas Cope finishes 33rd in the Gloria Division 2 car. Bowers Motorsports, Aries, WS Racing Esports, Delta V Racing, Pusha Payment, Monkey Butt. All the way in the back of the pack, as well as Vector Sim Racing. V Racers 39th, the Pole Sitters finished in 40th. Then, Make Performance Junior White and Absolute Motorsports, East Lip Junior, 42nd. Make Performance Junior Black, Swank Racing, Delta V Racing, Ingersoll Ren, GT3 Sprint 1. German Racing Esports in 47th. 48th went to the 246 of German Sim Racing Red. Pure Sims Esports 49th and RSR by Butt Kicker did not even make a lap. 
That's a look top to bottom. Phil Coiner picking up the fastest lap as well today, but it's Sean Campbell who picks up the Division I victory. Sean, he had to fight hard for that one. It took some luck. It took some strategy. Talk us through the final laps. Uh, I kind of want to talk through the whole race because the final laps were kind of like it, where it's just it was just really good, but really hard racing, right? Just a lot of fun. Um, Strategy-wise, I think it was pretty close to not making it on fuel. I think we all had to fuel save a bit. I was not expecting that, really. Yeah, at one point, there was a chance of an additional lap. Some of you drivers having to go 29 laps on the fuel. Others ran out at 28. At one point, you guys were dropping back further and further back. What was going on was first into that race where you were losing ground to the Ford Silva and Team Hoinsfeld cards? Slight sadness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we could see that they were bump drafting in front of us, which we weren't doing at the time. So I think me and Oscar hooked up because we both wanted to get to the front. Let's be honest. And then uh, it started working. They are they are still better at it. Got to give them props. I have absolutely no clue how he, Tom pushes that smoothly on the on the corners. I couldn't do it. But um, the caution helped a lot. Like had the caution not happened, I don't think we would have got back up to him. But that's just one of the factors, you know. Well, back-to-back -back victories on the trot. Really good position in the points. Your thoughts for Bell Isle next. A very different track in a very tight one. Um, I mean, Bell Isle is probably going to be like a fist fight compared to this track, you know? There's probably going to be just as much, if not more, contact, but of the more aggressive style instead of bump drafting style. Hopefully everybody gets through it cleanly. Well, congratulations on the overall race win today in the Division 1 victory. You're second on the trot. Thanks. That's Sean Campbell doing it for the Bees. Strong run from Sean Campbell today. Plenty of drivers hungry to talk with us. As a result of some of their finishes, Gregory Hopes in amongst those who did well today in their respective Division 8th overall, Division 2. Top spot for them. Gregory Hobson now believe, joins us here. Gregory, you come away with the top spot for your division. How are you feeling? Uh, pretty happy, to be honest. Uh, I feel like this was like our first sort of weekend that we were actually able to show our pace because I didn't bottle quali for once. <laughs> so, yeah, happy to be up at the front with some of the real quick guys for a bit. I was about to say that qualifying run seemed very beneficial to you. You got a lot of help in qualifying. Yeah, Max from Manatee really hooked it up on Tay. <laughs> he did a good lap, and I was able to copy a good lap like he did. And then, yeah, Toe's so important here that, yeah, put it P6, I think it was. So, yeah, I gave myself a fighting chance. Eighth overall as well in this running of the race today. Huge point swing. You guys were about eighth in the standings. Now, what's that approach going to be like for Bell Isle to break through with a victory and several of your championship competitors struggling? Yeah, well, uh, my teammate Dustin, he uh, he's notoriously really good at Bell Isle, so hopefully we can carry this momentum into a track that I'm not very familiar with. Um, but yeah, hopefully my teammate can show where he uh, shines on the tight street course type tracks like Long Beach, etc. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can just continue to grab more and more points. As we all know, there's always drama in these races. So just grab as many points as you can. And today we got uh, P1. So yeah, I think that's the best result we could get today. <laughs> well, congratulations on the run. I believe someone named Matt may be looking to celebrate with you. Congrats. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, just want to say thank you to uh, Jason Taylor from JTR Esports and uh, teammates dustin spencer uh right in the sister car and uh yeah definitely a, a a team team finish for sure and uh yeah thank you everybody for the broadcast as always record hopes of coming away with the division two victory here today strong finish for the 268 also standing by division three's car runner marcus r fox who ended up winning by a sizable margin element sim racing Marcus, do you have a copy? Hello, hello. hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon indeed. Your machine, good and qualifying, stayed up at the front most of the run. How would you describe the race today? First and foremost, I need to thank my teammate Jan. Uh, he gave me a super good pull in the qualifying, so I was able to 
uh, solidify my position from there on out and at the race start working together with the guys from Maniti, Max was was super nice pulling and everything and was able to save a lot of fuel behind him and essentially that's for one meter race after all I had to pit like one or two laps after my direct competitors from press tender. How would you describe the difficulty with some of the strategy and fuel save today? We've seen how close some of your competitors got some running out of gas at the end. Yes, absolutely. It was it was kind of weird because my overlay kept jumping from five additional laps of fuel to basically zero or not even basically it was it's down at zero. So I just decided to save at the second stint, just save all all the time that I can get and all the fuel I can have and essentially be able to run through the run through the race and eventually I ended up with uh, about exactly what I needed in terms of fuel and the strategy it was quite difficult to actually figure it out because I I still had a lap left of fuel but with the timing and the pit window closing soonish uh, I had decided that I was just gonna pit early and in the end I think that's also a little bit of what got me ahead in turn, this likely going to raise you from dead last in the point standings as a team. A huge shift for Belle Isle. What's your team's approach for Belle Isle in turn? A much different track compared to this one. And described by Sean Campbell as a fist fight compared to this one. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be it's gonna be a battle between the barriers. It's a closed street circuit. We're going to practice a lot. And we definitely need to practice a lot because the new model, the new tire model, damage model and everything the die racing rolled out in the most recent patch it changed a lot of it, a lot of it and it basically changed the game for us so we need to work on it we need to get the setups ready we need to get it rolling and do some telemetry stuff and we'll be prepared for it and hopefully come back stronger well congratulations on the division victory today huge swing for your team thank you thank you have a good one and merry christmas Absolutely happy holidays indeed. Marcus Fox coming away with the Division 3 victory. One more driver I think wants to talk to us and I think the big reason is because it's a Ford. Ethan Bass brought his Ford home in the top five today. Ethan, how? Ethan, can you hear us? Yes, now I can hear you. Yes, hello. Hello. How did you bring this Ford into the top five? For being extremely careful and having the best team in the world with spotting, dodging crashes and being safe and careful with the overtakes. I think the question some people may have is, why did you choose the Ford? This is a car I have a sentimental attachment to, and that's the only reason. That's the only reason. The only reason it's my favorite, there's no other better reason. Well, you did well today in the Ford. 15 coming into the points. Going to likely raise up for those points after today. How is this Ford feeling after the updates to the cars on the build? Yeah, I can definitely, I know it's strengths and weaknesses now. It's not the greatest when it comes to rear axle business, but it's honestly fine. I had it set up a lot safer than some other people so because I wanted to bring it home so I wasn't the fastest in a straight line I think those days are over but it's pretty good on tires and if you if you're careful with your right foot you've got a lot of grip to play with keep an eye on the four of the rest of the season congrats on your strongest run of the season thanks very much lads top five that's well deserved Harvard Motorsport putting their car up into the top five today thank them and the rest of our drivers for taking the time to speak with us today Dorian Today's post-race coverage here on Race Spot. It was a busy one to say the very least, but the next time out we go from the high banks of Daytona to Belle Isle. That will take place in the new year. To celebrate the start of 2023 action, catch that here on Race Spot TV. But as we look to close things out, we'd like to thank you for tuning in for today's action. Here from iRacing's virtual Daytona International Speedway. We can't wait to see you for this race on January 8th, 1440 UTC from the shadows of Detroit. We'll see how things play out in Michigan. But on that note, I thank you for tuning in for today. 
for the Ivor GT Sprint Series powered by Function Valve. For my broadcast partner, Stavon Slacker, for Hugo Weeks, I'm Justin Prince saying so long until the rest of your day and evening. You've been watching Ivor GT Sprint Series powered by Hoist Valve.